Hello and welcome! We are Small and Mighty and today we're going to play some D&D! How's everyone doing? How's everyone surviving the heat? Oh boy, the heat! Yeah, I'm your spray, Ryan. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, this episode is sponsored by Boots Pharmaceuticals Hot Weather Refreshing Spray. Not, not, not it's a spritz in the air, not, not a spring in your step. I mean, can, you, can you spray some over here for me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. I mean, Boots, oh, by all so means, nice. if, if, you, if Boots is watching, they can, they can always spray yeah. Boots the company or Boots our cat? Uh, like, she might be up no, there right now. Boots the item. Yep. Uh, I can't do it. Why can't I do that? I don't know how much money our cat has, you know. She might have, like, a whole bunch hidden away somewhere. Yeah. yeah. She hasn't told us about it, but she keeps, she keeps hiding and placing around the house we don't know. So maybe, maybe she's got this. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> getting back on track. Good. Um, it's it's warm stuff. today, guys, and I it think is. we're going to get derailed several times, probably. Yes. So don't, don't. <laughs> but... The plan is, as usual, we're going to try and play for about two to three hours. There'll be a short break about an hour in. Um, but as you know, this is D&D &D and improv and etc. So it probably won't go to plan. Especially with us all being a bit a bit silly because of the heat. Um, but we'll jump into it. Um, so I'll do a little bit of a recap for last session. Although I'm going to be a little bit light on details because Verity, who's back with us this week, wasn't with us last week. And she doesn't know no. anything more than what Christina knows. So I'm going to be a bit light on some of the details. But, <laughs> Small and Mighty, you came back to the Five Fellows and you informed Bachar that you had completed the first job. Um, and he, he really he wanted to celebrate. He was elated that you had been able to do this and basically demanded that you hold a celebration. And there was food and wine to be drunk. And you celebrated uh, quite late into the night at the completion of your first job. While you're doing this, uh, a package arrived for Christina, strangely addressed to the pub, despite the fact that you'd only been here for well less than a day at this point, really. Um, and inside was a spell book and handwritten by Christina's grandmother and seemed to be just what she needed after struggling with her magic early in the day. Also, from talking to Bachard, you learn a bit more about what seems to be a sinister plot uh, and you obviously are starting to uncover this this plot with gnomes and dwarves being kidnapped in the city. And in the, the brewery from before, you found that the symbol of this like a rose with a dagger behind it. And talking to Bajard, he kind of almost like strangely recognized it as a symbol of the Messers, who you learnt to be an independent spy organization, in, like an intelligence organization, from the neighboring nation of Riverdan. Um, why there would be having any interest or, or influence here in the nation of Brattenshire, you don't know, but... Time went on, and eventually the celebrations died down. And then we got into the shenanigans part, as everyone decided to have a bit of a night out of the town. Um, the party kind of split. Christina stayed at the tavern, which we're going to come to that in a second. Um, but Tally and Pebble, you decided to track down more information about the Nervum and this midnight meeting they were supposed to be having with this group who now know as the Messers. Um, you chase down some of them in the factory district and eventually learn about a meeting was supposed to be happening at the train station. And you eavesdropped on the conversation which didn't really tell you much more than you already knew apart from you spotted someone, this figure wearing this white, long white coat with a, like a ruffled fur collar, black slick back hair and a scar across his eye and he was talking to this that large brutish nervum you saw before. When he found out he wasn't going to get his shipment of gnomes and dwarves, he promptly shot that nervum in the face with a pistol, kicked him under the tracks of the train, got on the train, and then rolled on out of view. Yep. Now, while your groups were out on the town, there were some character reveals about Tali and Chad. Um, but I won't say anything more about those for now. We'll see if that comes back up again naturally in conversation. Nah. But what I'm going to do is pick up a... We're going to roll back a little bit in time. So as uh, the groups have... Well, the two groups of Veros have been out, Chad and Braz and Tali and Pebble. Christina, you are left at the tavern reading the night away into your spell book. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, what I described last time was a package arrived, it was all wrapped up in kind of like a brown wrapping paper with ribbons on it and like hand-drawn like hearts and flowers and kind of just very uh, cutesy kind of thing. And when you opened up, you found this big like, kind of like a leather tome, but again, similarly decorated like stitches and all this kind of cute stuff again. And opening up it was this manual, it's very much like 
<laughs> very much like you know in Harry Potter when you go Wingardium Leviosa and all that kind of thing. It's very much a manual about how the crypt where to form words or hand movements are. Uh, a little bit idiot's guide to casting your first spell kind of thing, but completely yeah. handwritten in this lovely cursive writing by your grandmother. Um, and it was very strange, like, uh, it was pointed out by the rest of the party, but, um, well, players, that it's very strange that this arrived on the exact day that you were having trouble with your magic. And I just, before we do anything else, I'd like you to roll me an intelligence check quickly to see if, see if something, yes, please, see if something just occurs to you about this. Sixteen. Amazing. Okay, so yeah. So not only is it strange that almost the perfect book arrived on the day when you could do it most, this arrived by post, seemingly. And for this to arrive by post from your grandmother, it probably would have to been sent a couple of days before your grandmother teleported you to the city. It just sort of sits kind of weirdly in your head as you're thinking about this, this sort of mm. fortuitous circumstance. But the only way this would have got here is for this to have been sent days before you even knew you were going to be in the city. Um, but studying this book, you, um, you, you do pick up a few things and you feel like you learn maybe a few new tricks, a few new magic spells, uh, to say, uh, to put it plainly. Mm. Um, but you also learn of a trick in here as well, like, there's some writing in here, a little section about your amulet. And obviously the amulet, it doesn't go into too much detail about like, what it is or something, but you learn a new feature of it. You are aware that obviously Dofo kind of lives in the amulet and you can bring Dofo out or put Dofo into the amulet. But this also explains that there's a trick where if you want to, you can put yourself in the amulet. So for limited time only, you can basically pull yourself into your amulet. Uh, you can leave Dofo outside, you can bring Dofo in with you. Only you, uh, although this hints at the fact that maybe in the future you might be able to bring others into your amulet as well. The amulet remains where you where it was, so you could essentially slide inside the amulet or smuggle yourself in. You give the amulet to someone else and basically like, smuggle yourself or something like that. But yeah, a little trick you learn. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're sitting there uh, reading, um, there was this big dinner table when you were having the celebration. Would you have stayed around that table or would you have gone back up to your room? Wait, what do you think you would have done? Um, probably stayed at the table. Okay. So yeah, you stayed at the table, there's, there's all sorts of commotion going on. There was a drinking competition between Brask and Bachard, which you kind of, as noisy as it was, you tried to ignore. Eventually people disappeared. and. Bachard is just kind of like putting away chairs and tables and stuff around you, kind of leaving it to you as you go. And he just looks over, kind of drunkenly stumbles out. What, what is that? What is. You've been reading that all night. And he's kind of swaying yeah, as he kind book. of points. Yeah, it's just a really good book. Oh, that's cool. Um, what, what, what's it about? Uh, it's just something my grandma sent me. It's not important. Oh, I, that's that's nice. That's very nice. How did how did how did she know you were gonna like? You only you only you, you only just got this job today. How did you? I, I don't know. I don't know. She knows. It's things she knows that I don't. Grandmother's eh? <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Huh? Go Sorry. Are huh? you a grandma? Am I a grandma? I mean, you've got one, or are you one? At the moment of pause, I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'm a grandma. <laughs> right, fair enough. But I'm, I'm, but it's just, it's kind of like he's very drunk, clearly. It's just like, I'm sure I must have a grandma. <laughs> mm. It's been a long, long time since. And it's kind of like sadness kind of takes over him a little bit. And it's just like, it's been a long time since I was back home and I probably did have a grandma. I don't, it's, I, I, I left that life behind to come here and be in the city. I don't really know, honestly. Are you from a, like, a village? Yeah, uh, well, 
people? I was at my 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 parents came from. Do you know? Do you know Torn? No. It's fine. There's nothing there. It's hills and rain, a lot of rain. I was. They, my parents came from there, and I was born here in the city. I've been here my whole life, but my family's from over there. It just sort of vaguely points, for some reason, upwards. You don't really know why. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I never knew my 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 bigger family. Just my just my mum and pa. Right. I passed away a few years ago. He's just sort of drunkenly, sort of, he's not even looking quite at you, he's kind of looking sort of to the side of you and just sort of swaying. Oh no, is he in that drunken face where... <laughs> hey, hey. I'm gonna roll and find out. Yes! <laughs> I've provoked There the is a pause, the there is a pause, time. and you just see this kind of this, this, these tears welling up his eyes and mm. sort of like starting to screw like... So. Oh. It... If it's, if it's alright with you... Christina, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a night. I think too much wine. Yeah, no, I, no, and you watch as he sort of stumbles away in his peg leg. Um, you can hear him uh, as he's walking away, like kind of like wiping away some tears. <laughs> you order a natural one. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so um, you're left alone. You're left alone in the tavern for a second. Um, I just need to quickly realize I haven't plugged in my laptop, so I'll be two seconds. But carry on. Good. The um. The, the the amulet trick. Uh, I, I'm really really hoping that the uh, the magic words you have to say for that for when you invite other people into it is uh, is uh, there's a party in my amulet and everyone's invited. Yes. <laughs> oh. Where is that from? I don't even get the reference, but I love it. <laughs> it's just, it's a general, just a general thing. A, oh right. <laughs> yeah. Good. Been, I really like the idea that the book is actually it actually says an idiot's guide to magic. Nice. And it's handwritten Beautiful. by the grandmother. <laughs> yeah. She's just incredibly <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> it was it was it was a uh, printed book that says Idiot's Guy into Magic and she's crossed out idiots and wrote Christina's. <laughs> oh fuck. No, that's not <laughs> no. That's not canon. Um <laughs> <laughs> not canon, not canon. No, we'll, we'll, we'll kill that in edit, right? Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> well, yes. It's not like it says live or anything, right? No. Right. no. Um, but yeah, Christina, you, you are wrong, left. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that ability, that trick I taught you about. Um, so this is something actually, technically, you you already had this ability, but it's something we'll say you've learned to do from now on. So as an action, you can magically vanish and enter the, your amulet, which remains in the space you left. Um, but da -da -da, when you're in there... You can remain inside the vessel for a number of hours equal to twice your proficiency bonus. So the moment you can stay in there for four hours. Mm -hmm. So well, if you're ever like lot. traveling, you like you feel like you need a little nap. You can just like hand your amulet to someone and go, I'll be back in a bit, and you can just go inside it and just hang out in oh. there for like You can basically and like this has been there uh, once before and you remember it. it's like a it's like an oasis island in the middle of an ocean with this beautiful sun and a palm tree. So you can just like pop off to the beach for a bit if you want and like leave everyone else outside. Oh. If it, if it was like, if it was longer, you could. If it was like a day, you could just post yourself to different places. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I like the idea that you could like uh, fast travel by just going in there and being like, just throw me. Yeah. <laughs> just yeet you across Actually, the fields. Oh it's very God. possible, but you could also do shit like. Um... Uh, let's say you need to get a man on the inside of the Thieve Guild. You're like, oh, Chad's like, oh, you can take this this special amulet. We don't need it anymore. It's magical. And they, they take it inside, and then, like, an hour later, Christina pops out, and she's inside the Thieves Guild. Like, I think... I mean, that was more my thinking, rather than, oh, well, take a holiday for a bit. But like, you could <laughs> well, also go is... in the amulet, and then we could give it to, like, the pug, and then the pug take you to destination. Yes. Pug Technically, travel. um... You can do that's that with Dofo as well. You could just make Dofo wear the amulet and Dofo can go <gasps> somewhere. Yeah, um, that's great. Um, only reason, yeah, it's an ability that you, you've had and obviously you haven't used yet. So I just want to remind you of the ability because I think it's a it's a very shenanigan worthy. Yeah. <laughs> and I want this it to be part of this cool. game. But anyway, coming back into the moment. So you're left alone in the tavern reading a book. Uh, is there anything else you want to be doing or you're just going to continue kind of like quietly studying your book? I fall asleep reading it because it's a very long book. It's a very long book. Okay. Um, you fall asleep reading it. 
Just like Friends. face down on the book. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, perfect. Um, yes. And some time goes by, you're not quite sure how long, Christine, because obviously asleep, but you are awoken by the door bursting open and coming through, you're kind of blearily as you wake up, coming through, you see Brask carrying Chad and through the kind of haziness, you see that Chad is crying and seemingly oh, no! covered in, like, this, you can see patches of blood. He's not wearing his shoes, which Brass is carrying, and Brass is just carrying Chad into into the tavern. Oh, what the f- what's happened now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> what's happened now? Yeah, we all had a lovely time last night. Oh, Nothing yeah. harrowing happened. There's no, no trauma. trauma. Everybody, yeah. yeah, everyone's fine. Uh, it's just a Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, take it away, guys. This is how, this is how Chad always spends his uh, spends his evenings. This is uh... Chad is a crying yeah. drunk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, how at this point, how drunk is Brask still? <laughs> I would. I, I kind of get my impression of Brask is although you're quite drunk, you have that um, you know where the the adult of the group instincts kick in. When suddenly, when when shit oh. goes down, you're suddenly sober. Like yeah. I, I, oh, that's what sweet. I can't the, expect. Uh, to be. The drunk leader of the night out. Yes. Yeah. The one okay. who's like, okay, fun's over. We need to get a cab. I'm gonna figure this out, and suddenly just can manage it. So, yeah, I, I think Brass, okay. Although you're probably, you're still, you're not, you know, you, you are drunk. You've got enough focus to kind of do what you need to do. Okay. Um, in in the bar. Uh, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to remember the layout. It, like, are there like pubs, like bathtubs anywhere, or like a particularly large sink behind the bar, or anything? You've like not that? seen a bathtub. Uh, there probably would be a sink behind the bar. I think last time we did say that you, you, you did set Chad down somewhere in this room. And you got like a, cl- like a dirty cloth and tried to like oh, that was clean yeah, him sorry, off slightly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so let's say I've just yeah put him down in the corner and I'm just taking like the rag off the yeah. table and I'm just sort of. Abbing him. Yeah. Like, I don't know, probably could just go on, like. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Just like spit shining him, basically. Lizard, lizard spit. Well, it's better than blood, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Depends on your perspective, I guess, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, Brask yep. is just sort of. That's his singular focus right now, is, is he's not. He's not probably not even clocked that Christina's still in the room. Yeah. Um, Chad is inconsolable. Ch- Chad's not. Chad's not saying anything that anyone can. Anyone. Yeah. Anything that anyone can discern. Yeah. Um. How do you respond, Christina? Or do you ignore them? I mean, I go. What have you been doing? What's going on? Why is there blood everywhere? <laughs> have you been? <laughs> Brask is gonna just be like dab 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 dab. Holy shit! <laughs> Had no uh, idea she was there. Yeah, Chad similarly didn't realise Christina was there and is going to have a pause in his in his um in his sobbing and just look like absolutely just <laughs> terrified that there's someone else in the in, in the room. And they're just gonna look just absolutely just almost looking through you, Christina. Right. You see that Chad has gone quite pale, as if, you know, he's like... Either he's thrown up horrendously, or like he's seen a ghost. It's that kind of visage as you look at him. I'm gonna... Brask will be like... Uh... I found him, and he's been injured, and he's bleeding, and we need to clean the rooms! I will say that... Clean the room! Right. Brask, you remember the, the blood that's over Chad? You smelt it, and you remember that it isn't Chad's blood. Mm. Oh yeah, true. You under the impression that he maybe fought off an assailant. Fought off an assailant. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot uh, that detail. Okay, the brass doesn't say that, <laughs> or he does, and then he's so drunk he corrects himself. This isn't his first language, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he'll just um, just be like, uh, "Chad is covered in the blood of our enemies." Um, and just sort of be, be abbing away, but then also uh, 
Maybe following us. We left a trail. We must fortify. Chad's gonna, Chad's gonna, Chad's gonna like sort of sort of sort of, sort of clutch uh, Brask's. Is, is Brask wearing like a thing that has a collar? Not a collar, uh, no. He wears like like straps and like almost like a got... bandolier. Probably a Ooh, few like folds that you could grab hold of. Yeah, you grab so the he's bandolier. Gonna, yeah. He's gonna kind of like yeah, grabbing onto the bandolier and the, and, and the folds. Be like, <laughs> we left a we left a trail. Oh, what did you? Oh just my that god, up? we left a trail. Well, we left a trail. Oh. And then grabs. Uh, uh, yeah, how much of a how how much? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm gonna be sick. Uh, Proceed fast. Is anyone dying? Um. Um. Not. Not currently. <laughs> nobody is currently. <laughs> nobody's currently <laughs> dying. Dramatic response as always. Good night. Okay. You were just seen. Christina, uh, relatively uncaringly, just gets what? up. Uh, as you go to uh, pack up your things and go upstairs, Christina, what you notice is that where you'd kind of fell asleep on your on the de- the table, like almost face first in the book, um, the book is now neatly stacked up, and so is all your things being like gathered together neatly. You don't know who by. And, and you kind of didn't notice it in the shock of them bursting in, but someone had tucked a blanket around your shoulders as you were laying there. Oh, that child, the cutie. It's, it, it's cute, but also creepy. <laughs> I reckon it was Dolpho. It's probably Dolpho. I thought it was that? magic, yeah, which is creepy. If it's the child, it's cute. But mm. at this, for context, I'm going to bed because I just assume these two have been in a bit of a like a random brawl with mm. some like people on the yeah, streets and they're just I think that's a because... very fair assumption. For sure, for sure. No, don't Wait, worry. I I would... Brask would never get into a fight. For no I mean, good reason. It's probably, just to be fair, it's probably not Brass who got into right. the fight. It's probably Chad, and then Brass yeah. broke it up. Yeah, that's Chad, correct. Chad would never yeah, get yeah. into a fight without a reason either. Who would want to pick He'd a fight with character. this? <laughs> you know, he's a man of the people. Who'd want to fight him? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you, you pack up your stuff and you head back upstairs to your your room. Uh, so Brass and Chad, you are left. So since since Chad is now semi-responsive and speaking now, I'm just going to sort of hand him the towel, and then Brask is just going to stomp across to the other side of the bar, grab a table with each hand, and he's just going to start fortifying and building up against Jesus. the door. Isn't that going to wake <laughs> everyone up, though? He thinks somebody is coming, and he's going to keep them out if it, if it kills him. Uh, hey, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to make you roll for it. You absolutely can do that. So, yeah, all, all the neatly stacked tables and chairs that Pachard had drunkenly spent doing, you undo all his good work and you barricade the door. Um, while you're doing that, we're going to jump across town to um, Tali and Pebble. Yeah. So you have... No, sorry. We'll say that you have just... Pebble, you've returned from eavesdropping at the train station True. and you've made your way back over to Tali, probably informed them about what you had ze- seen up there. Um, but yeah, take was it away. with me, right? No, because you used your hero moment to sneak off ahead to eavesdrop. Right, yeah. So they weren't far behind, but you can easily come back to them. Yeah, so obviously I tell, uh, I tell Tali, uh, it's like, oh, there's this, uh, there was this man. Uh, he look, how, how did the man look? Broly? Like, um, he was fairly slim, kind of oh, yeah. like tall and slender. Um, this coat probably bored his shoulders a little bit, but yeah. Uh, I mean, you described him as Giovanni last time for yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, but think Giovanni was... is. Yeah. Anyway. He's pretty chunky. Giovanni is pretty chunky. Giovanni he wears an is. Italian suit, definitely. I, I don't know if that's true. Um, but no, this guy was fairly, very tall and slender. And uh, they talked about. Uh, sorry, my memory is that of a fish today. Like, all nice memories that of a fish today. But yeah, basically, they told the. Um, he, he shot someone. I, I might. I, uh, is Pebble in shock? Hmm. <laughs> it might be. I, I do know. have I do have notes from last session, so it, it's good, it's good. okay if the explanation. So in character. well, yeah, Pebble tells Tally. Um... Just before I re- I've realised I've forgotten to mention at the beginning, but the hero token this week Pebble has it because although last week we had a special birthday episode, the previous episode Pebble you were given the hero yes. token, so you have it this week. Oh Jesus! Okay. Thank you, Will, yeah. for reminding me. Thank, thank you twice then. Um... But, 
but uh, yeah, so I tell uh, Tali, and um, like, what, what, what shall we do? Uh, d- um, I mean, well, he, right he, now you run off it in a train. Uh, do you want like? Can we? I don't know. What do we do? How how far how fast do trains move in this universe? Pebbles probably quite never fast. quite fast. Pebbles never been on a train, so I'm not going to give you like a miles per hour or anything like that. But quite fast, probably faster than you could run. Definitely. Yeah, right, right. If, not if even a, with expeditions or anything. Go on, go on, Will. If a train in this if a train in this universe left uh, left Dower Bridge, traveling at forty five no. miles an hour. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but but also yes. Um, yeah, so not not even with like expeditions retreat or anything like that. Okay. So, you could try it. You don't know, but in the time it took you to kind of get that get a little bit back, yeah, that no, train no. has rolled off quite far ahead. Um, cool. I I think I think for, for now, I, well, I think we have, we go back. It's it's late and and we don't we don't know what's, what we're getting into with this. Um, but we could come to the station. You know, tomorrow or the day after, and, and see if um, you know, they, maybe they had to arrange the train stopping here. So maybe the station master knows, or maybe they they paid some someone off. So maybe we can find out okay. some more information. Is the uh, question question? Uh, is the corpse still there? That it is right because they, they, he, did he like throw it onto the? So he shot him and then kicked him under the train tracks under the train. Oh, great. Um, you can go and look for the corpse. It might oh, the still train be there. that left? Yes. Oh, the so, train that so was they... parked in the station, he kicked the body under that train, and obviously that train then rolled presumably oh. over the body. Yeah. Uh, okay, I would, um, like, you can Pebble go look. Wouldn't wanna, no, Pebble wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and look, but Howard traumatized Pebble for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go back home. <laughs> Yeah, I guess they kind of start heading off and on, on the way back. Um, Tali is, is going to say, um, Pebble, so also, can you know, um, I hate I hate asking, but could could you maybe just keep, you know, you you know what I am? Could could you just keep that a secret? For yes, now? yes, absolutely, yes. It's a, from the circle. Ah, it's okay. again. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm. I'm trying not to draw too much attention to to me and and you, everyone. And there are some people looking for me, and I wouldn't want anyone to know where we're we're staying and anything bad to happen. Of course, of course, yes. So, thanks. I'm I'm kind of glad. Yeah. I'm just happy. uh, I I I I met someone like you. Why? Because because we established in the last session that. they are uh, very revered, right? Not mm-hmm. uh, people are not frightened of them. Yeah, people. But it's just like fall a to their knees in reverence to yeah. them. There is a yeah. So yeah, because yeah, I didn't. I I always had like. Well, I mean, my life was not. My life was not very fortunate. I always had like doubts about this. Uh, What's about I don't know. what? Uh, I shouldn't say this. And and um, they move, and, and yeah, he moves because he doesn't want to. Pebble wouldn't want to, you know, deny the existence of Tali, <laughs> or or imply that he thought that the existence of Tali wasn't can, was like a bluff. Can Tali roll an insight check? On that Absolutely. See, like, yeah. What does she? Could she figure out what the what the? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I imagine for, yes, for Pebble it is it is quite strange. This. Yeah, I've been in shock. Kind of an almost mythological fi- figure. Yeah, yeah. From the Abbey spoke about to actually come face to face with one of them, because I think I think we talked a little bit about this last time. But like your your experience with the incident had made you question a lot about what yeah. the Abbey talks about, and exactly. and this is the weird, almost like, uh, almost the opposite of a crisis of a faith. Um, but go on, t- yeah. Uh, what would you get, Tally? Uh, ten. Okay. Um, I mean, for for your sake, it's you also don't get a lot of depth through, but you probably are figuring that Pebble is very much having yeah a crisis of faith. But like I said, yeah. in reverse, uh, someone who had 
maybe being raised by the Abbey to believe and then question that is now going, oh shit, something they talked about maybe is real. And that's a kind of weird. Pebble doesn't quite know what to think right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Your existence is, is not like it's troubling to Pebble. Uh, Pebble seems almost quite comforted by it, but there is almost like a, a questioning going on with Pebble about what, what Pebble maybe should or shouldn't believe in. Yeah. But. Um, yep. Yeah, Tal Tali will. I mean, I guess, guess on 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 the way back, and she'll catch up and she, the kind of. She's just like, I, I know it. It might be um a lot for you, so I'll let you process. Um, but if you're interested, I I do the um the the being I I uh act on behalf of is uh, is Intim. Yes, uh, and would would Pebble know that? Pebble. Roll me a religion check. Yeah. That is not a name that you are aware of or immediately. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you. Religion, yeah. Four. Four. Okay. Um, so you don't know that name. The only thing you do know is that the Abbey of Civility—they essentially worship seven gods. Um, there's, there's things called the Pillars of Civility, and there's one god that represents each one. Um, Intin is not one of those gods. You've never heard okay. the name Intin before. Uh, which adds further confusion to your crisis of faith when someone at the abbey talks about revering is now talking about maybe a god who isn't one of the gods the abbey worship it, help. it doesn't um, help it, it just adds more confusion to what's going yeah, on in your mind like, yeah, good good to know <laughs> but and yeah anyways uh, th thank you for like, thank you for existing i don't know <laughs> And Ali is awkward. Yeah, I imagine yeah, you. I feel like after a few more moments of awkward conversation, you you end up with an awkward, quiet walk home. Mm. Um, and you, as you make your way back to the tavern, back at the tavern, um, Brass, while you've set up this 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 barricade, the door, oh, you kind of just about finish. You just about finish setting this barricade. Um, Chad, I'm going to say, just from. The stress and exhaustion of tonight, you have you've collapsed somewhere. Like wherever you'd been propped up, you have just fallen into a deep, uh, dreamless probably sleep as you've just yeah, like probably maybe holding this cloth somewhere and just you've just yeah. collapsed somewhere. Yeah. Um but Pebble Tarly, you make your way to the door. The tavern is quiet and shut down as you would expect, and you go to open the door I and bop. Brass on the other side, you hear someone attempting to open the door. <laughs> uh, Ask is just gonna like unsheath Dragon Fang. Oh no! <laughs> and just let out like the mightiest roar he possibly can. Oh! Is there a window? He's, he, he's in like yeah. full-on primal. Yeah. I'm protecting my family. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, I will say with that roar, obviously Tally and and uh, Pebble, you do hear that roar. I think you can quite easily figure out who this That's is. Right. Yeah. Um, Christina upstairs, you're woken up by this roar. Chad, you're not woken up. You are so deeply asleep and you, yeah, this really doesn't affect crazy, you. Yeah. But Christina, you've left some shit going on downstairs. You've gone to bed. You've probably tucked in nicely and then you hear a roar come from downstairs. Um, but Chad might have woken up. You don't obviously know at this point. Charlie and Pebble see the aforementioned trail of blood. Yeah, I was going to ask. That's a good question. Uh, roll me perception checks, you two. Yeah, I can do that. Do I? Do I? Is, it, is there? Is there an advantage for having dark, like dark vision? I'd say, do you, how long does that dark vision last? So not for it... Pebble. So Pebble, it, it lasts for an hour. You so gave me dark vision, but that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. But Tali okay. has it. Yeah. Okay. So actually, no. It's the opposite around. So Pebble, you have disadvantage. Right. Fine, fine. Tali, you okay. have a neutral roll. Okay. Right. So I rolled an eight. Wait, this is like, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So eight and eight. Yeah. six. Six, okay. Uh, no, it's very dark. You're very focused on getting home. You've had a bit of a, awkward. an awkward yeah. night out. And honestly, dirt and grime around Downbridge seems fairly commonplace. So you don't really spot it, mm. this trail of blood standing out. But um, you get to the door and yes, uh, you hear the roar from brass, the bar door's barricaded. Um, there are windows. So the, where the doors are, if you kind of go around to the side, there's like large like bay windows you can kind of look through. They all were all curtained over was a big feature that I explained a few, a few episodes So are they, are they still curtained over? They are still curtained over. Mm. These dark kind of like, almost like 
grey, black grey kind of drape just covered in these windows. Harley is gonna, is gonna, um, I, I guess, but... Ross? You, you okay? I, I go like, and, Yes. No. She's maybe going to use Thaumaturgy to, okay. to make her voice a bit louder. Oh. Um, so Brass, you hear a, a booming voice come back from the other side, shouting like, your name. Um, you I will, yeah. just for the sake of it, roll me, roll me an insight check, Brass. I'm going to see you're if you're... asking if you're okay. I know, but it's more, I want to see... Brass is in, like, animalistic <laughs> fight mode. mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want to see if you're, you're... The realization that this is a friendly voice cuts through that or not. <laughs> Uh, 22. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yes. So you do recognize Tali's voice. Booming as do, it do, is. I was going to say, is it? do I know it's booming from, like, outside the other side of this wall, or is it booming in the sense everywhere. that it's kind of coming from everywhere? Tali is <laughs> everywhere. Wow. It, is, it kind of is, like... <laughs> this is kind of almost very uh, voice of God. The voice is almost, like, echoing through the walls, kind of around the front half of the tavern. Um, but it's Tali's voice. And Brask is going to be like, Tali! <laughs> they get you too! No, we're, we're outside! <laughs> where? Out, outside the tavern! Reality. We can't get in! Are you, is everything okay? Ah! Uh, can can uh, you open Well, no! <laughs> can you open, yeah. the, can open the door? We can talk about it? Please! I try my part as well. <laughs> Uh, Brass, it's just going to be a little bit like, I mean, he's going to be slightly calmed by their presence, but he's also a little bit annoyed that he just finished barricading this door. <laughs> 100%. He's going to be like, ah, yeah, give me a minute. <laughs> and just sort of like slam his uh, boomerang into the door like a crowbar, put like one foot up against it and just start yanking everything all together. Yeah. You hear wow. this awkward, like, scraping of wood and furniture. Christina, you have been working in your head. Hear this noise as well. Um, although you can continue to ignore it if you like. Uh, after a few minutes go by, the door does open. You see just piles of furniture behind the door where clearly Brass had barricaded everything. Lovely. Can I, can I make the point as well that, like, when he finally got all the furniture to give, he, like, yep. fell amongst it. Yeah, he's laying there, kind of just like... <laughs> Like a crater. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Hi, bro. <laughs> what, what, um, does Brask recognize Harley? Oh. She well, does look different. It, but Good point. Does Tali still have. Yeah, so her Ooh. hair, her hair is. Pur well, no, her hair is. So she has like the. She's purple hair. Um, and her eyes, like the, the white parts of her eyes, turned black. So oh, yes. like her people are still saying. Brass color, is yeah. colorblind, so oh, the only thing right, that would look yes. would be a slightly different shade of grey oh, in no, places. No, okay. Yeah, I think for I think for Brask, if anyone, yeah, this doesn't actually change anything. Oh. Like your, also, I think for Brask, a lot of your perception comes from like smell as well. So mm. it still smells like Tali. So you, yeah, you instantly recognise this as Tali, despite some visual differences. What? Oh. Are you okay? Brask is just gonna like get up really suddenly, just scramble up to them and like hold them. Like, were you followed? We don't think so. No. Oh. Are oh, you? And just like <laughs> shove them out the way and start God. building up the. <laughs> yes. Start yeah, building Bra up the barricade again. Brask, hey, what? Why did you think? <laughs> why would you think we would be followed? What? What? Uh, what's wrong? Between strained like. He's pretty exhausted at this point. He's built this thing yes, twice now. Of course. So yeah. he's like, he's gonna be like, Chad, uh, attacked, uh, blood, what? everywhere, followed, blood, blood, danger. Oh my god, is Chad alright? You look over, you see Chad sort of slumped in like a booth, probably like yeah, just back, <laughs> very awkward. Definitely gonna have a cricked neck in the morning kind of position. Oh, yeah. Um, you can see that, despite you obviously he wears his, you know bright red, well, kind of reddish clothes. Um, you can see dark patches in them. Uh, it's been dabbed by a cloth, which has also turned a kind of muddy, dark, bloody colour as well. And he's just laying there. His boots are on the other side of the tavern. They seem to be stained with another muddy, bloody kind of colour as well. Can I ask, is this, like, slumped position he's in, can you, uh, well, can you demonstrate it? 
I want to ask a question based on it. Ooh, okay. Go on, Will. Go on, make it up. Show me what it looks like. So, his mouth is open. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yep. Yes. I was gonna, it is. Yeah, I was going to click on that as well. Um, yes. But but Pebble would approach like with a healer's kit because mm -hmm. Brask hasn't confirmed whether Chad is all right or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, roll me a medicine check, yep. Pebble. Can Tali help him? Like, 100%, him okay. Uh, roll advantage as you're kind of inspecting Chad together while Brass is continuing to rebuild medicine Barricade. Will, resume the position, please. Medicine <laughs> with advantage rolls me... Uh, Thank you. Oh my Perfect. god, 22. Jesus Christ. 22, okay. Uh, quickly inspecting over Chad's body, um, you find that there is no oh. obvious wounds on him. Uh, all the blood seems to have come. Like you can see, it's like as on the outside of his coat, but not on the inside of his shirt. It does seem to be this is a, you know an external source of blood has caused this. Um, Quite, micro and as question, you are, micro question: If on. there is no, how much blood is there around his mouth? Well, that's what I'm going to. As you are working your way around this, you do see. It looks as if it's not immediately obvious. It looks as if it's been wiped away or. or like feverishly move, but you do see a few specks of blood on, on Chan's lips. And as you kind of inspect further, and especially with a 22 medicine check, it becomes very obvious to you at this point that Chad has very, very sharp fangs on his top and bottom jaw. Would and I... You can just see specks of blood on his teeth. Right. Would I clock on any of that? As in, Roll like, me I, I an arcana check. <laughs> is this something that Pebble would notice, Tali wouldn't notice? No, that's okay. You, probably, you both know. Can it, I roll, so, roll, roll, roll me an arcana check as well, please. Or can I do a. Oh, actually, that's going to be religion, but it's going to be the same. So it's fine. We'll do right. arcana. It's a little 16. 16? Okay. Seven. Seven, okay. Tali's uh, fine. Tali, no. <laughs> She's having, Tali... some, she's having had a, a big evening, okay? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I wanted to roll low. Pebble. Yeah, well, I think maybe this makes sense to you. I think out on the farms where you live, there's a lot of like folk stories about the danger of the night time and wandering away from the village and stuff like that. And one of those monsters you had heard about is a, is a creature, a stalker in the night who attacks uh, anyone who you heard, anyone who walks too far from the village in, 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 at night time. Uh, but are creatures known as vampires. Of course. They have sharp fangs, they look like people, they walk among them, um, but they are known to drink the blood of the living. And the distinctive feature you always heard about them is having these sharp, right, razor sharp fangs. However, the stories also say things like they can't come out during the daytime, otherwise their skin burns. Um, they tend to have pale white skin, which Chad does not. There, there are there's overlaps in what you see yeah, in Chad, yeah. and there's also a lot of features which don't seem to line up with what you're seeing in Chad. But I think Chad lies there. I don't know. I don't know if I should like. I don't know if Pebble should be alarmed or he should be like go like <gasps> and then. I like, think. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. I think for Pebble, it's been a night of this, whereas this is another one of those things where this is a myth. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, yeah, but... <laughs> why? Um, yep. Uh, yep. But, but you can respond outwardly. I imagine there is probably like a, a gasp or a shock. But if yeah. you say anything further than that, that's up to you. It's a minute long <laughs> gasp. Like a. <gasps> no, no, I'm not going to. Are that. you. Uh, Pebble, are you okay? Did you did you find something? Uh, it, is, he, is he fine? He's he's uh he's not. Mm, he, um, <laughs> what the spell? Uh, he, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say. Pebble is gonna say okay. it, like he's got very large fangs, but no, it can't be. And I, I continue checking, checking him. Like at this yeah, point, Brass, you've probably finished building a barricade. If you want to join say, this conversation, Brass. Brass being able to hear this. Yeah, you wouldn't have to hear all of it, but you can now like properly come over does and. It, uh... Does it? Does it? Does that? Um. Does that? Does, does it? Trigger. Is it something that would alarm Tali or no? Yeah. What sharp fangs? Yeah, like is that? Is that? Is there something? It's unusual, it's no... certainly. Um, might unnerve you in a little bit because that's not something you're aware of people having. But then also for Tali, you've had a fairly sheltered upbringing. 
you're not sure. It's something that's odd to you. It definitely is odd, but doesn't obviously immediately could just be an oddity. What, what about Brasky boy? Roll me. You can roll me an Arcana. Arcana. Yeah. Uh, which is not particularly good with any god of five. Wow. Five. Um, you know in nature that some predators have sharp teeth. Maybe Chad is more of a predator than a herbivore. Um, that's the kind of line of brass thinking. It's. I would also say, like, realistically speaking, Chad's fangs aren't dissimilar to your fangs. I was going to say, uh, is he just going to, like, is this almost like uh, my fangs are bigger than yours? <laughs> so yes. Brask is just going to, like, get close and be like, ah, yeah. they're not that big. But for yeah. you, like, you having very limited contact, you, you're you not you're not particularly practiced in dental work of humans. Um, this doesn't at all phase you, really. This is... I, I probably will go like, yeah, yeah, probably. I, I, I'm being silly. It's been, it's been a long night. I, it's fine. I mean, he doesn't have to. He, and, and because Brask is here, I, I, I go like, I do the medical report. Um, and I go, yeah, he doesn't appear to be wounded in any way. How does Brask respond to that? Um, uh, a Brask would be like, but Brask is a good protector, so. Oh. Uh, Welcome. But what happened, Brask? Did you like? Did you find him like that? Like that? You see who who attacked him? Uh, he was alone. <laughs> I found him and I saved him. Okay. While you're having this conversation, question, oh, question for Adam. No, go on. Question, go on. With so, question. okay. So I'm gonna ask this question. Um, are people who are injured or or otherwise in some way mentally traumatized are they more vulnerable when they sleep? Like, just just it's a weird question, but Adam will know what I mean by. I then. will know what you mean. Hundred uh, percent, yes, hundred okay. percent. Um, and what and what's not going to help your suspicions about that is um, while I'm sleep or unconscious, there is a chat chat that coughs, and then starts talking. Um, what, what languages do you three speak? Oh, uh, I speak a bunch. I think actually. Speak some. Celestial, common, draconic, dwarvish, and sylvan. Okay. I speak. I, how yep. do I look at that? One second. Brass Brass reads. reads. Brass speaks. Brass, Brass doesn't read. <laughs> Mate, Brass. Mm. Anyway. Oh. Um. Gnomish. Good in... I only speak gnomish. You I'm should speak as... common as well. I uh, should common. <laughs> Purple, according to his character sheet, oh, language, uh, racial, racial traits, languages, you can speak, read, and write. Common and one extra language, yeah, gnomish. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that would have made this amazing that Pell was caught up, <laughs> been, been keeping yes. up so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, if you look in the section that says like proficiencies and stuff, you can see you speak oh. common and gnomish. Oh, uh, Tali, what, what languages do you I'm speak? In the wrong um, celestial, common, infernal, and silver. Cool. Um, None of you recognize the language that Chad is now speaking. Um, I want you to think of kind of like, kind of like black speech from Lord of the Rings. He just starts in this very weird, un and it's kind of like completely unlike a voice you've heard Chad done. This is very deep, it's like, Lord anymore. And it kind of like has this kind of rumbling to his voice, and it's very low and bassy, and kind of echoes around the room. And, and you it can feel have a posh twang. Uh... Doesn't have a posh twang, no. Um, <laughs> oh my god! You even feel that the room itself get colder as Chad is muttering oh, this. Check magic. Tali is immediately it. gonna grab her holy symbol and uh, and 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 yeah, kind of say something yeah. um, in in celestial. She's mm -hmm. gonna cast it normally, so don't worry. Okay. So you can't yeah, check magic. I um, guess I guess on yeah, it's presence of magic within. Things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll come around to the point in a second, but you also, like, you pick up on uh, Dragon Fang, it's magical, that's probably not a surprise, a surprise to you. Um, but yeah, um, there is a magic aura coming off Chad. What kind of magic aura? Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so... it tells you the school of magic, which isn't, which isn't, doesn't quite work here, but what you get a sense of, it's, uh, uh, it's not like a 
it doesn't fit so neatly into like a school or anything, but it is a sense that you are kind of familiar with Tali. You just get this sense of familiarity of kind of the abyssal sea. Oh, I see. Sounds a like nice holiday destination. Sorry. Does it again without spoiling too much of Tali's uh, uh, sort of backstory stuff? Um, is this is this the kind of uh, like thing that would make Tali uncomfortable? Like, does oh, not yeah. like. Hundred percent uncomfortable. This is this is very this is, this is the heebie-jeebies on steroids. <laughs> as in, like, as in, like, he's in he's in danger, heebie-jeebies, or like he he is danger. Is well, as <laughs> heebie-jeebies, you really don't know. But as you're kind of okay. holding the tech magic, um, Chad coughs again and then stops speaking, and that's that magic fades of him. I see. Brass recognize it as anything other than snoring. Roll me an intelligence check. Please. Uh, intelligence. Oh, 18. So, 18, ooh, okay. 18. So, you don't think it's snoring. You do think he's speaking a language, but you don't recognize it. I think, okay. I think especially because Brass, who is, you are quite proficient in many languages, as it turns out, you do recognize the cadence and the kind of like. Uh, the intonation of it, like it is clearly a language, but it's not one you're familiar with. Not to figure out uh, how Pebble reacts to this as well. Well, Pebble, Pebble is gonna just. In a corner. He, she's just gonna um, she's gonna stand up and she's gonna go upstairs. Do you know what I'm saying? She's, she's gonna go to get um, the dream catcher she originally made for Pebble uh-huh. from her room and then come back down. I don't uh-huh. know if people want to do something in in, in the. Dream yeah, so Tali just sort of quickly just rushes upstairs. Um, Asking Pebble, do you do anything in the moment that Tali's gone? Um, Pebble asks Tali, like, uh, what, what, uh, is, there, is there any problem? But Tali is gone, I think. Yeah, he, you shout out to Tali, but yeah, Tali just continues to run upstairs. Pebble, is, in Bas- shock. Pebble is frightened now. Ask is just sort of, he's, he's sort of trying to figure out what's going on with Chad by smelling him. He's like really close to his face, just like sniffing his breath almost. Yes. And he's gonna like use dragon fang, use like the very tip blade bit to just like just dink on his teeth and be like, <laughs> just see what's they going seem, on. They seem real. Uh, as you smell his breath, you once again get this. You actually get a big whiff of, of the smell of blood and that kind of oily substance again. Oh yeah, because this was. Oh, I know it's not. Blood. I know it's not his blood. Mm-hmm. But it, 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 it's both things, right? It's not his blood, and it's not normal blood either. I would think have, that way. And Pebble would have blocked on that too, or...? No, you wouldn't have, because you weren't like trying to smell or, or taste the blood. No, or but anything by like the colour just... of it. Well, it's night, it's probably candlelit anyway. Yeah, yeah you don't... No, it probably you... wouldn't look too much different. It doesn't yeah, look too much fair, different. Fair, fair, fair. It's oh. just a dark blood. <laughs> um... Drakens are fairly, like, carnivorous creatures, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I don't know much about human society mm-hmm. and that. Would it would it even be weird to me for him to just smell like he's been eating a creature? Probably not. Uh, like yeah. a lot of your eating habits are probably like eating other creatures. Your people were quite tribal. You probably don't necessarily cook all of your own meals. You might eat a lot of animals raw and things like that. So yeah, it doesn't really. It might be getting Anything. towards the point where you're starting to wonder what all the fuss is about. <laughs> That's the thing. If anything, I might be a bit impressed that like this guy is so fussy. He eats like I eat. That's fine. <laughs> oh, bless. That's cute. So, anyways, Tally returns. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Tally. Tally comes. She comes back down. Um, something. It was something in in her hand. She basically just puts it in. Um, she probably says something, and Celestial puts it in Chad's hand and like closes his hand around it. You watch as yeah, Tali puts something in Chad's hand. But I mean, Bra- if Brass speaks Celestial, she probably says something um, along the lines of like, um, uh, Intin, keep him safe mm. while he sleeps. <laughs> Can I be an um, asshole and ask, how does Celestial sound like? Because I'm curious. <laughs> the way I always think it, it sounds like Latin. Oh, nice. I understand. Okay. Latin, but a little bit kind of. It's very almost like a the language is almost like a song. It has this kind of very rhythmic kind of tune and and flow to it. Mm. Uh, but in 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 that wording and the, the phrase Tommy says, uh, you do hear that name Intin again. That's that is obviously a name and 
you know, transcends languages. Uh, so you hear Intin and then these kind of phrase around it that you don't, you're not familiar with. Cool. Pebble turns Change into the emoji. Um, Change your voice. Pe- Pebble, um, sorry, it, it was meant to be for for you. And I'll, I'll make you uh, another oh, oh, one. Don't, don't think... worry, whatever helps Chad. Uh, mm. Yeah, if it helps him, it's fine. I don't, I, frankly, I'm not sure what's going on, but can Me neither. Uh, and I, I think Pebble's gonna ask. Uh, I've, I've had, I've had stories about uh, creatures called vampires. Because I'm assuming vam- the word vampire is not like as widespread as it is in English. No, like, no, it's not. It. There's no, you know, television, media, and stuff like <laughs> books like you know, like True Blood or nothing like that. It is, it is kind of almost spread by like you know stories of the boogeyman mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It is, it's not a common thing. But these Ali creatures... know the word? Um Yes, you would know the word. Uh you would know it similar to, to Pebble does. Like it's a it's a story, right? It's not Yeah not real. Yeah, it's like but yeah, you always thought I mean it can't be, right? Like it, he, he he he's been out in the sun with us, like I don't know, Pebble is very confused. I'll, I'll put it this way as a nice comparison. Um Compared to being a godling like Tali, that's very, you know, fairly common knowledge. This is much more obscure. Mm, the mm. Sort of knowledge of okay. if people know about vampires, their their children's like, tales yeah. to scare people out from going in the woods at night and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, like, is Pebble? I mean, we've we we've sort of like established that Pebble wasn't superstitious anymore, but now with Tali, mm, Pebble is very com- confused. Yeah. You've had a real yeah. <laughs> all all the stories you basically learnt as a child growing up, and then kind of grew out a bit in your teenage years. Yeah. And now suddenly turning out one night to be true, maybe. But I, I I assume stories to have like levels of credibility. One of one of them yeah. is like religion, and pe- lots of yes. people follow it. And the other one is yeah. like something you tell children. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Does the Abbey have an official stance on the vampire myth? Ooh. Is it just that it is with children? Like like do the Abbey teach anything about it or do they just disregard it as as so they disregard it as as um kind of like yeah nonsense essentially okay. um if anything they if there's anything that ever turned up as being almost like a legitimate claim they probably claimed to be work of devils and demons oh, fair. um which the, the abbey does have a you know official stance on devils and demons do exist and they are bad <laughs> um but they wouldn't almost uh they wouldn't even give credibility to vampires as being their own thing that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Um, well, what a lovely night. Uh, no. Uh, as you see, um, Verity, everything was fine last session. Sure. Oh, you, you. Sure. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> fun but times any, for all. Fun times for all. Um, Anything else you guys want to do, or are you going to start to go to bed? How does even Pebble think of, I mean, can he even sleep? He would want to have some yeah. alone time, to be honest, but fuck. I mean, what's real awkward for Pebble is that your room in particular is the room directly above the room you're in now with Chad, and has missing floorboards, so you can see directly down into this room. <laughs> <coughs> uh, wow. If, um, if, if, we're, if we're worried about... Um... Chad or someone come after Chad or, or, or uh, something. Do, is it? Do shall we take a take watches down here? Oh, okay. Ash doesn't really get the issue at this point. <laughs> he's he's like he's not injured. He's just sleeping. But were you, were you I'm not sleeping worried? too, guys. Oh, wait, wait, he guys had a big and well, now he's sleeping. Well, were you were you not worried about people coming after him? She gestures to the door. But not gonna get in. Quiet. I mean, fair. We can go in until Brask took things away. But we didn't, we didn't try. Brask makes a good barrier. Um, I I am sure of that, Brask. But what if um, how to put it lightly? Uh, I'm scared. I'm 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 scared of I'm scared of Chad, like himself. Doing something. <laughs> Brask is bad. gonna be like, <laughs> "Hello, 
this guy? <laughs> go, like, While Chad is asleep, he's like, it's fine! <laughs> uh, Braska, uh, <laughs> okay, let's not wake him up. He seems calm now. <laughs> um, I, I, I can... We, we can tie him down if you want, I don't care. We can what? Oh, well, I was just thinking we could sleep down here. Um, and one could sleep in, or two could sleep and one could stay up for a little bit and then... I'm happy as long as there's like a safe distance, <laughs> as long as there's like six feet between <laughs> between Chad and me, relatable. It's a social sense. distance, guys, um, just, <laughs> just to be safe. We, we don't we don't have to if you don't think it's, it's necessary. Just, just I mean, I can, I can, I'm, I know what I'm going to do when I go to my room, right? I'm just going to look through the floorboards and <laughs> into chat. So might as well do it, yeah. <laughs> Brask is just going to like... That crater that he made earlier in all the debris, just gonna sort of work it into a nest. Yeah. Just curl up in it. <laughs> what does he yeah. use again? There's all like the tables and chairs and stuff, oh, and chair. it, it probably, yeah, definitely are broken oh, because you were not careful with them. Um, uh, what's Birdchild gonna do? <laughs> what is Birdchild oh, gonna I'm do? I'm gonna go and grab her like bedroll from upstairs, and she might, if there's like a pen and paper, she might like write like to Birdchild. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the mess. Oopsies. We think Chad might have been attacked, question mark. We can explain it when we're all up, basically, and like put it under his door. Okay. How? Because uh, you're going to get bed rolled, you're making a nest pebble, are you sleeping downstairs everyone as well? I am not trying. I, I am just like, I, I'm probably like sitting on, on a chair that remains like, even if it's only got three legs, it's fine. Sure. And, uh, I mean, Brass hasn't, the Brass hasn't broken all of the furniture, he just broke some of it. Fair. And I, I think Tali has a blanket. You had a bed roll. No, I, don't I, I don't know if it's your inventory, but like each room came with a bed apart from yours that came with a bed roll. Yeah, but I also have matter. a blanket, which is a. Which is oh. a uh, so, wait, does Chad have a blanket? Chad doesn't currently have a blanket, he's just asleep wow. in a very and, awkward position. Then she puts the blanket around Chad. What's that oh, position, Will? Sorry. So sorry, uh, it, it, it's uh... Right, but yeah, okay, that's the last. <laughs> well, I imagine, I imagine it's actually, it's actually probably even, it, it's, it's less like head back. It's more probably like, like slumped up against the thing, and his, and his yeah. neck is probably being pushed, pushed forward. But yeah, yeah. that's yeah, the one. That. Yeah, should like, put a blanket over yeah. him, put take the the dreamcatcher out of his hand, put it around his neck instead, just so like it doesn't okay. drop it. Oh, that's nice. Uh, okay. I am um, gonna... Sorry for changing the canon of this position. That sorry, he was, uh, well, how something. could you? I know, I'm really sorry. Ruined the whole day. Let's go Whoa. back, let's, in fact, let's do the whole scene again, guys. Yeah, the top, just, so. yes. <laughs> See, I, I wanted to... Thank you. I wanted to put, like, put you on, like, big close-up mode while well, when you did the... When, <laughs> when we were in the, <laughs> inspecting your... <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, are, are, are the three of you basically setting up camp downstairs? Yeah, I think with... so. Okay. And before okay, Tali so goes to sleep, Tali's gonna pray. Mm. He's gonna pray real hard. In, in... One second. Because it's suggested that they sleep. Brask is asleep. Yep. Okay. Good. Right. Uh, Pebble, what was that? Uh, no, I was gonna say if Tali prays in celestial, would mm. wouldn't Brask like start questioning? Like, what? Or joining or something. Ooh. Anyway, there's a there's a Brass line between yes. there's a line between Brask understanding and Brask caring. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, fine. Fine. <laughs> He'd um, rather sleep right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, Brass is, Brass Brass is asleep when this happens. Yeah, but the gist of what Tali is saying for Adam though is basically um, it's kind of asking Intin for for guidance because of you know Chad yeah. uh, gave kind of a, an aura that that was pretty pretty uncomfortable and you know, so praying praying for guidance and and, and um. You know, a, a sign that I if he's working for Folch or not, and, and that sort of stuff. But yeah. no one else would hear that. Apart from that. That's fine. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, cool. Eventually, you all come to rest, and you'll kind of make shift campsite down here. Um, does anything? Do you leave Chad in his awkward position, or does someone prop Chad in a nice position? I am not position? getting close oh, to Chad. No, Charlie would do that. She'd okay, let, Charlie, she'd prop him on. down with the blanket. And eventually, you go to sleep. You say your prayer and stuff, and. Mm -hmm. You have a sleep. And it does Chad Chad's go full on again, or? Well, Chad, you, despite the traumatic events you've been through this night, you have an incredibly peaceful night's sleep. Of course you do. 
almost as if it's almost as if there's a, like a been parental suffered. figure watching over you, protecting oh. you in this moment. Mm. Mm. Oh. It's Brask, isn't it? So it's time to it's yeah. Brask. <laughs> it's sure, Brask. Sure, yeah. Um, but I think this might be a nice place to have a little break. Yes, it might. Do we? Should we do a short rest or long rest? Oh, this will be this will be a long rest, guys. You can all have <laughs> guys, a long please, rest. Leave us <laughs> cool, Your first rest. long rest Yay. since we started playing oh, this I think, game. I think I screwed it up <laughs> last time. It's so we bad. Had I've had no spells for fine. years. Yes, I uh, think I already yes. had one, but I just think I. My God, I have so much health. This yeah. is wonderful. <laughs> Yes, cool, all, yeah. all you press um, that you do the long rest thing on Dini Beyond and Shall we yeah. run back at uh quarter past or what what do we do? Can we make it twenty? Twenty past, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's make it twenty. Yeah, that's good. It's hot, have a little bit of a longer break. Very nice. Uh, I'm just setting that up now. This has to yeah. I have to make it uh, Um really What I'll say for you guys though is that when we're back we'll we'll try. Um Unless there's immediate things you want to do in the morning, we'll try and do a bit of a, an actual downtime kind of thing. So we'll probably start to move into the two days passing. So have a little think about what you want to do, and we'll, we'll kind of skip through some stuff and then get back to... Make some progress! Make some progress, guys! Indeed. All right, so see you in uh, 12 minutes. Is that right? No. Yeah, sounds right. Ah. Yeah. No, so 12 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Bye! And we're back! Yay! Right, so we're going to jump back in where we basically left off. So it is now the morning after. Um, you have had various night's sleeps. Uh, Christina's disturbed by all the noises downstairs. Um, weirdly enough, the person who had the best night's sleep was probably Chad. You had this very comforting parental comfort throughout this night. Uh, but you wake I always up. sleep well with a full belly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good hearty meal. <laughs> Before bed. Hearty! Hearty? <laughs> yes. Yes. I didn't mean to say that. Anyway. Um, so yes, you wake up in the morning. Um, is there anything anyone wants to immediately do? Like I said, we're going to try and... We're kind of in a bit a loose kind of period where kind of two days stretch by now, so we can kind of just pick points randomly. But I do I do have one thing I would like to do immediately. Yep. I'm going to guess Tali does, has had no guidance from, from Intin. Uh, as of yet. Not in the night. Oh, not in the night. That's fine. Um, so she's gonna... Oh, wait, can I not... Uh... Oh, it's fine. I can't... I can't ritual cast this. Um, that's fine, then. Um, she will just cast Detect Good and Evil. Yeah. So she's... Yeah. Um... Mind me what Detect Good and Evil says it does. Okay, so. For the duration, you know if there is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you, as well as where the creature is located. Similarly, you know if there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. Mm. Uh, vibe check, vibe check, Chad. So, a few things ping up on your little magical radar. Um, it can penetrate walls, yeah, by yeah, the way, so it might, if, if there's stuff you... upstairs, yeah. Detect... Maybe the walls are evil. This whole tavern's evil. You detect that, um, although you didn't sleep there, your bedroom is a consec it's a consecrated space. Mm -hmm. um, you detect the presence of an elemental somewhere in the building, coming from Christina's room. That's fine. You imagine that's probably Dotho. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do not detect the presence of any aberrations, celestials, fey, fiend, or undead. Okay. I imagine the... Yes. Uh, this is me being silly, but I imagine Tali going to chat like, Good morning! Are you good? Or evil? Are you good? <laughs> <laughs> How good are you? <laughs> um... Anyway. Yep. On a scale of one to ten, <laughs> yes. how benevolent are you feeling this morning? Uh, in the universe. The neck. Oh, yeah. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an in-universe alignment chart. How does this make you feel, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> I just put on a gigantic scarf. <laughs> People just like 
Well, uh, good morning, and is that is that lawful good or? <laughs> yes, kind of morning. Lawful morning, guys. Um, Neutral morning. T- Tali, did you say that you put the dreamcatcher around? It would be around, around his neck. Yeah. Neck. Uh, have you removed that before he? Do we, do we need to roll initiative to see who no, wakes she's, up? she's not. She's, she's, I mean, we could, but she she won't. Even if she does, she won't. She won't remove it from the chat. Yeah, what you okay. find shadow around your neck is this kind of handcrafted, like woven dreamcatcher. Uh, various colours, but you do notice that there is this kind of uh, feather at the centre of it, which um, it's been kind of almost looks like maybe dyed to look very similar to the feather that Tali has as a, her her casting focus. A holy I'm symbol. My, 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 yeah, my. Um, and as you kind of notice, it, although obviously you are completely unfamiliar with this this object. Uh, you get a sense of comfort from it, and it reminds you of that sort of paternal uh, feeling you had oh. when you were sleeping. Oh, okay. Odd. Lovely. Odd. I, I, will, just... I will. I will reinterpret the 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 paternal thing in that case. That's good. Good. Yeah. Tali does look the same as she did before the nighttime, by the way. So her hair is back to white, and her, her eyes are normal. That's, <laughs> that's normal. What's yeah. it gonna be for her? And I go like, like. Eh. No, no, I don't. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, could Chad? Could Chad? Can, can I roll to see if Chad would just like immediately intuit that this is that this is and this is probably getting too granular for what we want to be doing now? But I just want to see if Chad would immediately be like, "Oh, this must be Tarly's," or just be like, "Huh." Some... I will say, I've seen a roll needed that this 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 appears. Yeah, this this makes you think of Tarly. I'll just say that. Cool. Okay. Uh. Chad would, Chad would, um, kind of, uh, sheepishly, uh, go and try and give it back to, uh, to back to Tali and be like, uh, oh, pa- uh, morning, uh, it was like, oh, I'm, must have been a, <laughs> must have been a, a good night, yeah, we all, uh, clearly fell asleep here, and yeah, uh, <laughs> great, great party, um, yeah, uh, Tali, uh, not sure how I got this, but i this looks like it might be yours. Uh, so there you go. Have it back. No, 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 no. I, I, I made it um, for you. So you keep it. Um, you can put it, put it in your room. Like, just keep it with you when you sleep. And it will make sure you have a, a, a nice sleep. Cool. Well, it certainly worked. I slept like an absolute baby. It was a bit more lovely. I'm very glad. Uh, right? Even better than the baby. As far as I understand, babies tend not to sleep all the way through the night. So, uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, um, well, I'll take that and put it up in my bedroom. Do you, Chad? Do you remember anything from last night? Uh, yeah, we had a we had a great night. Uh, yeah, it was a good old feast and and. Uh, Everyone was on good, great form. Brask, Brask drank an awful lot, uh, along with, uh, with 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 Birchie. Um, uh, yeah, had a, had, a, had a great time, and clearly here we are. We, we just all sort of, uh, continued the party on the floor, clearly in the corner. Brask um, mentioned you were attacked, so I was wondering if you remember. Did did he? Uh, yeah, uh, you know what Brask is like, uh, yeah, it is, yeah, just, yeah, no offense to the guy, uh, he's always in the old, especially when he's, especially, apparently, especially when he's drunk, uh, he's, he's always thinking things are, yeah, you know, uh, pretty dramatic and, and stuff, so I'm, I'm sure it was nothing. And you, just, you know. didn't get attacked? Uh, what? No, we were, we were here. Getting... You were here the whole night. Yeah, uh, we, we all. I mean, I mean, yeah. Chad, Chad is is uh, as as we just, as we established. Chad does remember going up up yeah, yeah, yeah. up everything up to the bite. Uh, uh, so... And I will say that that. I I this. Well, I was going to say just to be easier. Like, Tyler, you get a strong sense that Chad is lying. My no, detect it's, evil. It's like, like he's you, like, you, right. you, like you know he was out. Brass like took it. You know, told you he was out. Like you, you don't think Chad is being. You're not sure whether Chad knows it or not. I'll leave that for you to figure out and kind of act on your own. But yeah, you know that Chad was out. 
and you get a feeling that he's probably not telling the full story. Yeah. Chad's also kind of like trying to to like go towards the staircase where he can he can take his stuff up to his room. Uh, you guys still yeah. in the bar? <laughs> yeah, you'll be down there in so, the bar. At this point, Rask is going to wake up then. Yep. He's going to wake up suddenly and not understand why he's surrounded by <laughs> debris. And he's going to think something awful is in the middle of happening. <laughs> and he's going to wake up and be like, just going to go, They're everywhere! No, Rask, <laughs> you're okay. And he's, yeah. Yeah, you, you um, see? You see what he's like? <laughs> he's just you, you watch as, as Branch jumps up, kind of like in a defensive stance. Uh, his bees swarm around him in this defensive kind of swarm as well. <laughs> the bees form a shape of a shield. Can you imagine? No. Well, like a barrier, but yes. But no. nothing, nothing's happening. Well, this is just from last night. And Brask will just sort of... Everything's take fine. In, take in the surroundings for a minute. Uh, put Dragonfang back. And just be like... Uh, good morning! You watch the bees kind of just go back into the hive that is now like it's basically strapped to the backpack of uh, well, let's say strapped like a backpack to the back of Brask. Did, did you sleep okay? You seemed a bit um on edge. I had a dream we were attacked by hordes and hordes of horrific beasts. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good sleep. <laughs> That's a good okay. Cool. Okay. That's good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I seem bloodthirsty. <laughs> Brask, Brask feels comforted by horrific, brutal, carnivorous things. That's what he's used to. None of the civilization is... If, he, if he'd had a dream that we were all just sitting around in a bar chatting, that's his nightmare. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. He, had, um, he dreamt he was in the middle of a huge bloody battle and loved it. Okay. Uh, Chad's gonna, before he sort of slips away up the up the stairs, he's gonna have like a moment where he he clearly wants to, like in in, in one version in a parallel universe of this, he would now ask Tali if he could tell her something in private. Yeah. Uh, but, and, he's, and, he's, and he's about to, and he just... Yeah. Oh, anyway, oh, I, I should go and uh, yeah, clean up. Yes, uh, unresolved tension. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, development. Good. Uh, the Pebble would be awake uh, by now as well, and maybe even preparing some breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. Like kitchen. you can go to the kitchen. Is... Uh, as you go into the as you go into the kitchen, like you know, first thing in the morning, you find that Helga is already there. Of course, cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Best friend. Um, you, it's strange because you know, you never saw her leave. No, <laughs> last night. No need to. You didn't hear her come in this morning. Oh, she's there, just uh, same as before, just like a machine, just cutting up vegetables and putting it into a pot, and making stew. Um, um, you can see that plate of food you left for her has been eaten though. Oh, nice! So I go like, good when, morning, but... Helga. Oh, I see you've eaten your food. Oh, nice. Uh, so what's in for um, breakfast today? I'm trying to, like, establish conversation, even, like, while being completely silent, she's not going to respond. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Um, as you ask the question, what's for, you know, what's for, what's for, what food is there today? You just hear a satisfying plop as a load of vegetables gets chucked and put into a pot of stew. Okay. Just carries on. But um, yes, you're able Ooh, to. Oh, salty. Know, uh, savory breakfast. Okay. You're able to, as you did with the previous night, uh, basically use her like a, a, yeah, a like kitchen a utility yeah. and you <laughs> just chop up veg and cool. you're able to cook up some breakfast for the rest of the party. But um, you won't won't dwell on that. So, Christine, you, know, you come down and there's a cooked breakfast. Um, Bachard does come down to the, the mess. There was a deep sigh. And then he goes to get some books and starts to work out how much more furniture he needs to buy. Bubbles uh, Brask is gonna. Okay, cool. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, well, Bubble comes to the chat with like a plate heaping with breakfast, trying to like mend the situation. Yeah. It's like a breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> that definitely <laughs> does improve his mood. Nice. And he, he looks at, like. No, it's okay. 
know. He did get a no. He was prepared and then still sigh when he That's sees the cool. mess. Um, we we donated our wood carvers tools, didn't we? Oh, did oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we can't, we can't yeah. offer to 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 like mend the furniture for him. Mm. You could attempt to offer. You, like, you can try mending the furniture without wood carvers tools, technically, or yeah, you can buy some. But um, I mean, Chad wouldn't. I'm just I'm just a bit bored. I might try and like tidy up the room. Like we'll start while like, before Birdchart gets there, like just trying to put everything back. In you order. neaten it up as best like, you can, but there's still broken furniture. Which trying to salvage yeah. whatever she can. Ask doesn't see the problem. Yeah, of course not. Um, <laughs> just sort of picks up a chair to sit on it, and then puts his food yeah. in front of him, and then that's it. And yeah. he'll probably make like because you said it was a vegetable based. He'll probably make a joke about how this isn't. He he prefers his meals a bit more dead and bloody. And he'll like say that to uh, to Chad with a wink because he thinks Chad's this carnivorous creature like him now. Uh, and Pebble says, "Ha ha!" ha! Yeah. <laughs> <And leaves. laughs> uh, Chad, Chad sort of <laughs> looks like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you will have breakfast, uh, and then also, all well, Chad is Chad is still got patches of. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, so he's just, you. yeah, he's just so fully, fully not even acknowledging that. Yeah, hundred percent. It's very hard to get rid of that. Um, but anyway, cool. So you have your breakfast, uh, and then yes, the two days. Uh, what do you want to do with your two days? Um, um as, you can okay. do things together. You can do things separately. But go. Was it explained to Brask at any point? It was not okay of him to destroy all the furniture. I feel like it, Charlie it, should. Here's the thing: that. it wouldn't have been explained maybe so far, but if you try and do more, Bertrand definitely explains to you. Please don't do well, that. The thing, the thing I'm getting at is, Brask doesn't make the connection that it was a bad thing to do, and mm. that it's in any way a, a damaging thing. Uh -huh. As soon as somebody says that to him, he will absolutely go out of his way to fix it. Okay, interesting. Right, so, so if yes. somebody did, he would be trying to fix it. Sure, okay. Like a toddler with Legos, just like slamming bits together. Oh boy. Okay, so what happens is you basically hear, like, you didn't say it directly to you, but you have good perception. You you hear Birdchild grumbling about the broken furniture, and basically you ca catch on the fact that this is a bad thing. So then you spend the rest of the day trying to repair the broken furniture, We're and Birchard has to try and stop you from <laughs> making more Breaking problems. Breaking it more, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this three-legged chair needs an extra leg. Yeah. I'll take a leg off this one. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, but this other chair, oh no! Oh, well, that probably, but also maybe you lose kind of like, this chair should have five legs, and you then... Yes. Yeah. Sturdier chairs. Each, le in, each in, chair in... has eight legs, I'm sorry. Yes. In the morning, while everyone is still together, like, can... can... Harley ask Pebble, uh, why don't you go kind of find Pebble? Like, Pebble, can you, um, my leg is still pretty bad. Yeah, sure, uh, med kit coming up. Yep. Um, so you I make aim do that. One sec, I have to take the last night's med kit off uh, as well, because I have, like, a limited amount, don't I? No, so we talked about this before. Uh, well, while you are in around the city, I'm right. going to say don't worry about catching that. Cool. If you go traveling outside the city, then I'm going to care more about it. Oh, cool. So I have to... Okay, I have to erase But while you're in the city, okay. uh, basically what I'm going to say is because the 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 Five Fellows is your home hub and yeah. it was, you know, built to, to supply the original Small and Mighty, it has supplies that you can basically stock. So things like sense. ammunition, rations if you need them for the moment and like mm -hmm. med kits, you will basically have to or always restock them while you're sleeping here. Cool, so cool. don't worry about that. Fantastic. Um, but technically, you don't need a med kit for, for what you're about to do, oh, so right. I need you to roll a medicine check. Right. Fantastic. Um, you want to get 13 or higher. And technically, well, Chad, you still have broken ribs, so you might want to... Ask, I was going to ask if that if that was still affecting Chad, or if Yeah, that hasn't uh, gone away. Okay, yeah, so that hasn't been... Your, your hearty really meal for yeah. the night before hasn't helped, so... No. Hasn't hindered, uh, but it hasn't helped. You haven't like magically healed that, so. My medicine check for Tally is a 14. 14, so Tally, that's one I success. Can roll for Chad as well. Yeah, go for it. Um, for so Chad. note that down somewhere. You need three successes for it to, uh, oh, to okay. heal. Oh, no, for Chad, is, uh, it was a 10, so sorry. So for you, yeah, it's, it's 
trying to help Chad is hard considering you're, you're still kind of afraid of Chad. Chad's probably pretty jumpy, so it probably doesn't. Yeah, you yeah, both, both of you are a bit like don't almost like don't want to touch each other. <laughs> so it makes it very hard for you to do any medicine on him. Obviously, it doesn't doesn't happen that way. But it's, I I can picture Chad saying, "Oh, but my rib is also broken," and me going like, "Oh, like, oh well, why don't you, why don't you try eating it as well? See <laughs> see how that goes." No. Chad, um, but... is, does Chad does Chad come to Pebble? Like, I'm gonna have so who happens, and we can all hear each other and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because because while while Pebble is trying to treat Chad, Tali yeah. might go, um, "Chad, how did you?" Oh no, this, ah, uh, my, my brain, he hurt himself before, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the broken ribs were like, from the fight. How did you hurt yourself if you didn't go out, Chad? But it's fine, because it was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the broken That's ribs fine. were from the fight with another Vim. Never mind. So. Yeah. But the blood wasn't from the fight with another Vim. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so I was going to ask how, how effectively Chad is able to clean his, so far, only set of clothes. Oh my god, you don't I... have to change your clothes! By yourself, not super well, but obviously as part of this downturn, you could go out and try and find someone to clean your clothes for you. Someone who could keep yeah, their yeah. mouth shut about cleaning blood out of a set of really quite posh clothes. Kind of the weird advantage of being in the in, in low it's bank, the, the, the run-down, gang-infested part of Dowbridge, is that <laughs> I imagine most places that do like cleaning probably say no questions asked, <laughs> just on the yeah. door. <laughs> uh, that that would be that would be one of Chad's Ch yeah. Chad's two priorities here are that and uh, keeping an ear out for any news about m missing okay. or, or, um, or brutalized or yes yeah. roll me so this people. okay so this will take you the two days you'll be doing this kind of thing while you're going out and about so let's um. The dry cleaners is not a problem. I just need to find out. It will, it will cost you some money. I just need to work it out. But for the rumors, roll me. How are you going about doing this? Are you just listening to people? Or are you talking to people? Like, what, how, describe to me how you're trying to gain this information. That Chad would. So, so Chad would in in the next couple of days he would absolutely be avoiding going anywhere near yep. the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't want to be anywhere near that at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, he also wouldn't be wanting to draw any attention to it at all, mm -hmm. uh, as well. He's probably now also aware that the the the, the, the elongated teeth, the fangs, yep. are they are they permanent? Are they out all the time? They seem to still be there. Oh, cool. so he's gonna not. Uh, he, it's he's, one of those things where it's not like those fangs turned up last night either. They've kind of been there for a while, but it's almost right. like you've. You know when you're like very conscious of something. Yeah. You can yeah, really it's, it's feel, probably, yeah. No one will be talking like this yeah. for quite a while now. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so he's not going to be actively asking, but he's going to be listening out. Maybe listening to see if if Bertrand, uh mentions anything about his about the guy not coming back, or if there's any mm. word on the street at all. So it, it's it's a, a passive listening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, roll me a perception check then, please. Fourteen. Fourteen, okay. Um, you listen to... As you're walking around trying to go to the, obviously, um, to the, the dry cleaners. I'm just going to call it dry cleaners. Um, definitely probably, not what it would be in this time period, but it's fine. Wet. Sorry. Wet cleaners. Um, yes. You are listening, and as you walk around town, you don't hear anything that, that catches. Um, you hear more rumours, people talking. You hear people... Some people are worried that maybe... Their jobs are at risk with the the Ica shortages that are in the newspapers, um, but you don't catch anyone talking about a, a missing or dead homeless person. There's, there's uh, you do catch a more, few more people talking about like who, who do you, who do you reckon is buying those gnomes and doors going missing then? And just Ooh. you hear various people blamed. Uh, you hear people talking about you do people talk about the nervin, but then people talking about uh, I'll bet it's those South Cost Strandic people that are stealing people all the time. And etc. etc. You just hear people spout all sorts of rubbish, essentially. Is Chad from yeah. South Costrand? No, no Chad is from Vividan. Yeah. Um, Christina's Ch from South Costrand. Oh! Yeah. oh wow. Chad's going to be very relieved to yeah. hear that he's going to be partially very relieved to hear that no one's yeah. talking about it, but also quite confused because he obviously doesn't know what happened yes. to the guy after he started biting him. Mm -hmm. uh, so is 
thinking like, oh, what the fuck did I do with him? Yes. What, what I was like, going to add yeah. to that is that when you're out in the streets, you don't hear anything. When you go back to the tavern, you spend some time there. You do quietly hear Burchard asking some of the other patrons if they've they've if they know where um. Trying to blank. What was his name? Dimitri. Oh, Dimitri, Dimitri. Damn it. Obviously, I should remember this. He's not. It's not important anymore. Ah. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> he not important in our hearts. Come on. Sorry. Uh, you see, Bachar asking, has anyone seen Dimitri? He's usually in by now. And, um, but yeah, you do catch Bachar asking that. Uh, in terms of the uh, the wet cleaners, um, to clean your clothes, it will cost you two silver pieces, two sets. Bargain. You have to just like stand there. They, however, just, like, don't promise that all oh, your clothes will be as red as they started afterwards. That's absolutely fine, as long as they are less red in a specific sense. <laughs> yes. So the child just has to sit there with like no shirt, with no extra clothes, and wait. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. also can be like, it was the, the main coat that got blood on it, and like I said, because it didn't your wounds, your actual undershirts and stuff are fine. Uh, but obviously, you could have the whole the whole set done here if you want to. You just sit there in your underwear, <laughs> in, in the in the wet cleaners. I feel, I feel like Chad would be so traumatized by this in like a a yeah. Lady Macbeth style thing that she probably would want the whole yeah the whole set. Yeah. Uh, the other option Chad has is you could also just buy new clothes. Oh, I think he would do both. Okay, yeah, he would do both. It probably. Retail therapy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting used. Would he be able to get something? I'm assuming for for the small amount of money that Chad's got. Sorry, I'll I'll, I'll move on from what Chad's doing in a sec. For, assuming from the from the small amount of money that Chad has, uh, he pr he wouldn't be able to afford anything close to the quality of what of yeah. The, so the stuff he's been wearing. More for Will's sake than Chad, because Chad probably doesn't know how much his clothes cost. Uh, if you wanted to buy fine clothes, that would be 150 sets. Um, okay. But to buy some sort of basic commoners' clothes, which uh, there would be abundance around here, uh, of course, of course, it would cost you five sets. Five sets. So for seven sets, you can have clothes cleaned and buy some more clothes. Cool. Uh, but we'll do, but we'll do both of those. Yeah, but these are the proper like you know they're kind of scratchy shirts made of some sort of weird, weird like hemp or something like that, and very plain brown trousers and things like that. So this is this is Chad's Chad's, uh, Chad's sort of lowest lowest form of clothing that he's ever worn. Probably. You know, Most. you know, in a movie where like people lose their clothes and they just end up wearing like. Oh, New York t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The baseball cap. That was like a crop top, and uh, yeah. I yeah. heart Dower Bridge. Bridge. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. I went to Dower Bridge, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, with stupid. Yes. They the arrow points up. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. So that is what you're doing. If you want to do anything else or more, you, well, you can come back to each other. But anyone else want to do anything over the two days? Yeah. You also don't have to do anything if you don't want to. I'm not going to force you. But bought, uh, Tali, think... you... Yeah, go on, Tali, first. Uh, Tali wants to do a couple, a couple of things. So she mm -hmm. does want to go back to the station. Oh, okay. of course. No, I would, um, I would she, And they, they, would, they would tell Pebble that, that they, they're going to go and um, try I think and... Pebble's going to go with them, yeah. Okay. So the two of you make your way to the station. We can do this. Feline oh, also, the... what time of day are you going? I assume daytime. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, we're gonna go to like you know, like each station would have like a station master, like a controller mm -hmm. person, um, who would kind of you know organize the yeah, trains coming yep. in and out. That person will find them. Okay. Um, uh, as you go to Low Bank Station, um, it is with my hood up. By the way, I got my yeah, cloak. Yeah, that's fine. Not the busiest station. Uh, you go there and you see those two concrete platforms that you saw the night before. Um, the kind of little ramp leading up to it. You probably see maybe one or two people kind of waiting on the platforms, but not not a lot. Uh, but you do see this kind of um, very much like the you know the fat controller, a uh, guy wearing this kind of suit, a top hat. Uh, there's probably like a mutton chop beard that's kind of it's it's brown but with like streaks of like grey. Um, just for fun of it, um, one of you two, give me an extra interesting feature this guy's got. Um... Oh, I don't know. I'm blank. I've blanked. Um... Go on, Eli. You can do this. I believe in you. He's got um, 
I don't know, he's wearing glasses, because why the fuck not? Like, sure. Oh, and oh, it's, yeah, it's a rare thing in this yeah. era. Yeah, glasses. glasses. And you see this, but what they are is, um, for this um, rotund face, you see these tiny little yeah. beady kind of glasses perched on the end of the it's nose. Fun. Fun. And as you approach him, you see you just kind of just like push them up and like, and he's kind of looking like this over his glasses at you. Yeah. Can I, can I help you? No, I think we probably take, take a hood like down and so I just kind of can't talk to him. Um, yeah, well, we hope so. Um, I'm going to roll something quickly and see if he mm-hmm. has any kind of recognition. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, we did it. He does! <laughs> he rolled a 15 and plus something for an inside check. There was this kind of look of a... <laughs> kind of cleans his glasses and puts them back on and I'm just like... And then he just gets very awkward and starts looking around just like... Oh dear. Doesn't quite know how to respond. But I thought I thought Tally was only recognizable as uh, Godling at night, or is it just? It because she does she doesn't look human though. So some people oh. who are very they're very religious may figure out that that she's uh. not human, but doesn't look like anything else. Yes. So, um, I like this guy rolled high enough that he's figured that out. That's the important part here. We hope you can help, Tally. You watch as he's kind of looking kind of near you, but not like directly at you, because he doesn't quite know if he's allowed to. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, you, you can tell. You can see you in his face, he's listening posture. very intently. Yes, we hope you can help Harley and my friend. Hello. Um, there was a train that came here last night. He watches it like straightens up his tie. Stands up straight as he can. Was that train? Do, do, what was the last train recorded that came into the station? And the last one that left? I'm, 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 I'm allowed to talk now. I'm asking you a question, so yes. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, the the uh, last... way in like a, like, a, like a snarky way, she's just like, yes, I'm yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you're, you're... The last train was the one in the, the this evening. Uh, the, this evening, last not last evening. Um, it's very flustered. Um, <laughs> it would have. It, I think it ran a bit late last night. I think it came in uh, about about seven seven o'clock last night. Your, your Holiness. Uh, I hope that, that doesn't displease you. When did it leave? Um, it left pretty pretty sharpish. Um, I said it was running late. It left or maybe a minute or two afterwards. I hope that's okay. There were no other trains in the station. There, there shouldn't have been. No, nope, that was. There's only one train that goes goes up, and there's one train that goes down the coast each day. The coast goes in the morning, and then the ones up to the mountains goes in the evening. Were you working yesterday? Uh, it was. It was. I. I. I... No, 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 Your Holiness. I was. Um. I was. I was elsewhere. This guy starts to sweat profusely. Oh. What was it? Was your colleague here? No, no, no it was. Uh, I, I'm not explaining myself. Um, yesterday it, it was it was my shift, but I was I was told not to come in for the day. Who told you? My, my superiors. They told me to just take a day off. I think they said they would arrange cover, but then I don't. I don't. I came in this morning, and I don't think anyone had been in here. Who are your superiors? I just um, the, the you know the the rail the the rail guard. I just just. But 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 a name. If you would. Let me find a name. Let me find a name. Specifically, <laughs> name a name of the person who told you to take. It, it's fine that you did. You're not in trouble. Him. Evan. Him. His name was Guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> what was it? No, no, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, that would be. Oh, that, that would be. That would be uh, Captain Everard. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Where, where do they, um, what would they do? You said they're a rail guard? Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, they're up in the, um, 
there's, there's some offices up in up in the bureaus. Up in there, it just points to the the main part of the city. I, I don't. I mean, I don't. You don't. He, I don't see him. He just points to a wall behind him, and you see. Uh, you two didn't see it, but um, I tried it before. This this essentially a telephone. Uh, the thing called a wired sending station. It's like uh, they just they call me on on. They give me. They send me a wire, and, and they tell me. That they told me not to come in. Yes. Otherwise, usually, I'll just I'll just I'll do this every day. This would be the same um, gadget that was at the brewery, wasn't? Wouldn't it? Within the brewery. So you, we... you two specifically didn't see it, but oh, okay. we'll say that you know about it because why not? Um, there was one in the oh, like, yeah. what appeared to be a main office in the brewery. Hmm. There's no symbols or on it or anything. Oh. To, to... Uh, there is like a badge on it that just says um, B I S. Okay, but nothing. Yeah, nothing suspicious looking. Bees. Yeah, there's nothing. Sorry. Bees. We had Bees. this joke before. Oh, which. Yes. Uh, I'll let you both roll history checks to see if you know anything about that. Oh, sure, you can do that. History. That B I S. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Um, that's enough, I think, for both of you. Um, B I S, from what you know, stands for the Brattonshire in, in uh, hold on, <laughs> Innovation Society. The Brattonshire mm. Innovation Society. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. Um, which is an organization full of inventors and etc. Okay, I and mean, we 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 got a location of the the, super, the superior officer from this guy, right? Like, it was he, like he a, just said, like a building. Yeah, not a building as such. He just told you a district of the city called. Uh, he called it the bureaus, but from what you've heard, it's actually called the new bureaus. Oh, alright. Do, do you know um, what building your superiors might might be in? He'll spiel for an address for you. Okay, right, perfect. Um. Okay. Adam can't bother to make one up, but he'll give you an address. Thank you. Um, yeah, 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 you've yeah. been very helpful. Today. He sort of awkwardly bows, like, uh, you're, you're welcome, your, your holiness. Um, Can you do me, Tali, uh, a favour? Uh, uh, yeah, of course, of course, anything, anything. Um, Just, um, if anybody asks about me or someone like me coming coming through and speaking to you, just don't, don't tell them. Of course. That, my, We're doing my... some, uh, some, some. Want to just, you know, undercover uh, work. My, my lips are sealed. Perfect. Okay. Have a nice uh, day, week. Just... Have a nice life. He, bow. he <laughs> bows again. Put her back up. <laughs> Good. That was a successful interaction. Hmm. Indeed. We at least have a name now. Yeah. Or somebody who, who, who seems seems to know, uh, or seems to to know that that person was coming. So maybe we can do something with that later. Cool. Let's go to the bureau. Well, Tali is going to suggest like they uh, to not do that immediately oh. because they they uh, well we don't we don't. I'm still a little injured and 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 maybe we don't want to to rush in. To, we don't know anything about this this uh, captain, okay. and if he's working with people who are stealing people, he might be dangerous. Yeah, it's probably. But best. we should soon. But it's maybe probably... we should. Um... Yeah, good if we gather like the whole team or something. Mm, they can come as a, a backup. Maybe we could go in. They could they could back us up if anything goes wrong. What? But uh, I like your, I like your, um, uh, I don't know, like, I like your, uh, I just like, uh, hot words today. Enthusiasm. Yes. Yay. Good. Um, Love your enthusiasm. I like your assumption, kid. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I like, like the cut of your jib, you know? Um, <laughs> I like your chutzpah. Yeah. Yay. We want everyone to be happy. Um, cool. What? But then, yeah. okay, so, you head back to, also gone. I, while we are having this moment outside, like away from the group, I would mm -hmm. approach Tally and it's like, "What do you think is wrong with chat? Is there anything wrong with chat? Should I be worried? Should we be all worried?" I don't know, Pebble. Um, okay. he, you remember when he was giving off that um, the speaking into the language? Yeah. I just, I, I felt very uncomfortable 
it's a bit of a it's a little complicated to explain, but but the the, the being I uh, serve I, I do the work of um, mm. they fight with another being uh, in in a place called the Abyss of Sea. Um, and they fight over the people's souls essentially, um, okay. and. He he just I got a I got an aura a feeling that that somehow Chad was was connected to that place. So hmm. I don't I don't know. May, maybe he it's, it's possible he's he's being targeted, or it's possible that he is doing the work of of a being who's not so benevolent. But I don't know yet. Cool. I will sleep better tonight. Well, it's not it's not um I, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing immediately, obviously bad. I think we should just be careful. Okay. He won't do anything while I'm here. Oh, that's that's a relief. So you you don't need to worry, Pebble. Like okay. I I can I, I can protect. I can and, try to not worry. I but I think we should. Um, yeah, I think we should be careful, but. Take care of Chad. We don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, he did. Uh, I did. Uh, I asked him about last night. Um, you know what he remembered. Uh, just to see if we could get uh, an idea of who may have attacked him. And he he um he lied. <sighs> Chad. <laughs> I, uh, um, Pebble is. I think Pebble is a little bit annoyed by Chad by Chad's front. Basically, no. I mean, not front, as in like Chad's personality. Like when he is not a vampire, <laughs> um, the the part of Chad's personality that Pebble knows is annoying to Pebble. Yeah, that's not surprising. I don't think. Um, he, uh, yeah, he said he said he was he stayed in the tavern night. He didn't get attacked, and Brask was uh, had too much of drinking, got confused, which we know is not true. Yeah. So. I'll be keeping a close eye on him, but I don't think you should worry too much. I'll be keeping an eye from my floorboards. <laughs> um, that's maybe not strictly necessary. <laughs> well, I mean, no, because he's gonna. I mean, this this was like, no, too meta. Because, uh, well, too out of question because he would go to his bedroom from my room. So. Um, although you you mentioned you know you there were stories that. You, you said last night you think Chad might be a vampire. Yeah, well. Uh, what are the what are those stories? They they are meant to like it's people who cannot you know it's people who cannot see the light li the light of day because otherwise they turn into ashes. Well, I don't know if. Hang on, question for Adam: Is this like true in this world or? Well, I mean, you know, you can say whatever you want I've at heard, this point. Like yeah, these I've are stories. stories like yeah. whether they're true or not, I'll decide. But you, the, the stories that Unai would know, Pebble was able to but, know as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, these people have like very uh, pale skin. They cannot. Um, they burn with the, with sunlight, and uh, they feed on other. They feed on people's blood by biting on their neck. That's basically what Pebble has heard of. Well, it might be a story, but I've learned anything is, is possible. And, and sometimes stories don't have the full picture, right? Um, mm. I work for Inton and the Chantry, or the Abbey even, not the Chantry. Uh, the Abbey don't teach about them, but they exist. What, so. uh, what are they? Can, well, I don't know. Would, would Pebble be? Would Pebble allow himself to ask this question? Would Pebble be so brave? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not for now. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Oh, it, it's possible. You know, the story is is not quite true, or maybe it's. Been While twisted. you're pondering this, Pebble, I'll let you roll. Let me roll a history check just to see if you dig up I'm any not... more knowledge while you're kind of contemplating all this stuff about them. Oh, she, she would have said actually not common, like Chant Abby don't commonly teach, because I know they do, they do sometimes, they teach a little bit about. Uh, <laughs> I've yeah, rolled, Pebble, roll me a history check. I've rolled a natural 20, plus one, 21. Fuck yeah, you did! Yeah. <laughs> so right. kind of, as you're kind of thinking more about this, like, you mean, just, like, muddling it over overnight, thinking about it, and like, 
obviously there are, you know, uh, scare the kids kind of stories about vampires, but when you kind of like dig into a bit more, you had heard a bit more about what vampires are, you think? A lot of the stories tell that where vampires came from was um, in a far off land, a uh, nation called Greshka, uh, far to the west. You've never been there, you've only heard some stories about it. Uh, there was a forest called the Bloodvar Forest. It has these bleached white trees with red uh, leaves. And the, there's a village nearby of humans who would cut down the trees that were very valuable and obviously great for making you know, wood, furniture, weapons, that kind of thing. And there was an ancient s- spirit that lived in the forest that hated that these humans were attacking its home and destroying its home. It warned the humans away and they did not stop and eventually came to the point where it just cursed these humans. And the next time they came, after it basically it warned them and said, if you come one more time, you will be cursed forever. Uh, they obviously ignored that mm. and they came. And as they cut down the trees, this time the sap of those trees ran red, blood red, and it seeped into their skin. And from that day forward, all those humans, those woodsmen, found that they craved the blood of their own kind and basically turned on one another. And that village fell to ruin as it was destroyed by these newly formed vampires. Mm. So, yeah, you've heard very much it is a curse from a a forest spirit that essentially was like, if you're going to kill my people, I'll make you kill your own people. Neat. Um, I hey, obviously I relate that's you... just the theory. <laughs> I relate that info to Tally very yeah. nicely. Yeah. So you, that, you... does it because because um oh, okay so yeah it's fine. Oh, Tally kind of hmm. interesting. Hmm. But it's probably a story, right? Yeah. Although again, stories you know there, there may be some truth to some. Parts of these stories, so maybe not all of them. But yeah. Thing. Just but look, this morning I did um I did check for you know the presence of uh of uh, evil in in tavern, um and and Chad does not doesn't seem in- inherently innately evil, not an evil being. He still seems to be a human. Um. Okay. So hopefully that makes me feel a little better. Cool. Uh... Yeah, let's keep an eye uh, close eye. Mm. Yeah, if you if you see anything weird, just make sure to let me know. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. That ends your little forage to the train station. Yeah. Uh, anyone else want to do anything? Apparently, does want to go to the home of people and give them money. Okay. Slash uh, heal well, their wounds and stuff. Sure. Just like. Yeah. Roll me, roll me an investigation check real quick. Let's do that. She's not looking for any. She's just kind of going there to like. She would ask for Chad, go there and like give them yeah money and then. Okay, and roll me. Like, like she she's going to help the the homeless and see like is there anything troubling them? Like do they do they need like? Sure, sure. Them? Okay, make it make a persuasion check instead as you're asking around trying to find where homeless people are. To oh, help but Chad would know, right? Um, we, I, we said we'd talk about it later. And if you ask Bachard, Bachard actually says he doesn't know where they are. Oh. They turn up in his pub, but he doesn't know where they congregate. But, but, you said um, I can I can point you in the right direction, but I, I just well when Chad was asking, I didn't want to say anything in front of him, but I can point you in the right direction. Uh, there's some spots around town I think they hang out, but they move all the time. I can't can't keep track of them. I, this place is a safe place. They usually come to me. I don't. I don't actually know where they sleep, unfortunately. Well, if you could just point me in the right direction, that would be that'd be very helpful. I really, yeah. If you have, yeah. if there's any spare food and any leftovers we won't use, I can take it to them. Um, but yeah, so he points you to some people who you could ask. So I'll persuade and check, and we'll see what you. Yeah, we can do it. Oh, um... ten. Okay. Um. It would have made me put on like her chantry vestment, not her abbey. The abbey. I've been playing too much Dragon Age. Um, her because she has religious vestment, like for like clothing, like kind of robes. Roll with advantage. But not not too obvious. So, so I can still yeah. cover it up. But like obvious enough, that I could just like 
Yeah, okay. Roll with advantage. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. One extra, okay, it counts. It does. Yeah. I mean, it's so like, what happens, you don't... It's not that you don't find a, a group of homeless people. Um, the group you're talking to, basically... They kind of act a bit selfishly. They basically tell you where they're hanging out. And they basically take you to what appears to be an abandoned like warehouse where that group are hanging out. But they don't. They they basically claim to you that they don't know where anyone else hangs out. And you you are limited to this pocket of homeless people to help. But you do. And obviously, you Birchard does give you some like, leftover food for you to take, and you're obviously able to give them money if you want to. How many, give them, how many of them are there? Um, let's roll a dice for it. <laughs> What was that voice? 12 people. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, 12 people. There's 12 people here. And it's, it's, a, it's a combination of you see humans, you see uh, what looks to be some of the elvish, um, maybe a dwarf or a gnome, and they're varying ages as well. But yeah, 12 people. Are these. Apologies if I missed, if I missed part of this. Are, are these the same group? Not the same no. group that Chand ran into. Okay. Not that anyone here knows that, but. It's a different group. Um, so I'm closer to the factory district that you were in last night. Mm -hmm. So she she would um if there's any like if any of them need healing she would uh, heal them. Sure. If any of them have any diseases or uh, conditions like like deafened, blinded, yeah. paralyzed, poison, she'll heal those too. While well, she can heal them for two of them. Uh, uh, how how do you heal that? That's a restoration. Do you have the material cost for that? There is none. Haha. <laughs> lesser restoration. It's a touch spell that has a verbal and somatic components. Oh, I find material. Mm -mm. Okay, that's fine then. Um, as you ask if anyone's got disease or injuries or whatever, they all put their hands up. <laughs> well, um, I might have to come back over. Some, who's the worst? You yeah, they, basically <laughs> eventually after some, <laughs> uh, they do. You whistle it down to who are the most injured, and you are able to help them. Good, and you good. give them some food. And um, do you do you leave them some money, like you said? Yeah. How much? So, like how much? Okay. So obviously, so how much? If they gave them like one silver piece each, is that like is that a lot of money? So if you to buy stuff. Like, yeah, obviously, it depends on what people are buying. But let's take your bread rolls for example. They were one copper each. Okay. And wh so, how, what's the silver to copper ratio? Ten. ten. So ten yeah. coppers makes up ten copper crumbs makes up one silver scepter. Okay, okay, okay. She might try and give them like one each. Okay. One silver so each. Twelve silver. Mm. Okay. Uh, the eyes light up. This is uh, infinitely more money than these people have had maybe in a long time, if ever. Um, so yeah. Cool. Okay, that's what you're you, doing. You spend time with them. You talk. Yeah, you spend them, time. You heal them, etc. Et et like make friends. Okay, cool. Anyone else, uh, particularly Christine or Brask? I you haven't done anything yet. If you want to, I think mean, I mean Christine is just reading her book, yeah. pouring over it, being like, "What? Uh, what is this word? I can't pronounce it." Nice. Yeah. Like, Lovely. Getting <laughs> to grips with it, so she's kind of like. Just not like like realizing time's passed. And... Yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, as you're reading the book, though, one thing does as you're kind of flicking through it, are you open to one page in particular, and there is a letter tucked in there. And a nice like it's clearly not attached to the book. It's another handwritten letter, clearly in your grandmother's uh, handwriting. Uh, the gist of it is something along the lines of, "I, I sent this to you, Clay. I, I thought you could do a little bit of help with your magic, um, but don't forget to go find my sister." She'll should much better at teaching yeah. it than I am. Oh yeah, that, that um, I've got an auntie that I need to go look for in Dowerbridge. Like knows magic and things. Mm -hmm. Um, been a bit busy, Grandma. Actually, if I love the idea that Christine is talking to the letter. Talking to the letter, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> Come to pestering me. And saving the world and that. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Probably gonna like put the letter like on a surface nearby. <laughs> I don't know if I have a bedside table. Probably <laughs> something. You can get yeah. get one of the boxes of potatoes from Chad's room and like make I mean, it into a bedside table. You can buy one. <laughs> Might be expensive. 
get for but you can try and buy furniture if you want to try and buy furniture um i'll make do with what i've got because obviously because christine has come from a wealthy family she's never had to like go to a whatever the equivalent of ikea is in yeah. this world to like buy stuff so it kind of doesn't cross her mind yeah you're just like, oh, here's something right in front of me. It's not great, but here we go. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so do you just spend the whole two days reading the book then? Pretty much, yeah. Fair enough. Like, pop out in, outside into the front door, be like, oh, I should probably, like, get some fresh air or something. And then it's yeah. like, oh, but I want to keep reading. And this has you... never happened to Christina if yeah. she's not a reader. Hence why she's struggling. Yeah. Do you, you, while you're spending time reading, do you spend any time in the amulet? Like, do you go to the little island getaway beach thing and read there? Um, I attempt, I think I attempt to. Mm -hmm. Then it takes quite a few goes to, like... Yeah, I like that. So, see. yeah, it takes a few times. You try a few times and it's it's not until, like, getting towards the evening of that last day when you attempt it and you get it right. And in the same way that you've seen that whenever you recall Dotho back in the Emma, Dotho turns into back out of its cat's form back into that blue blob and then gets sucked into it. Uh, yeah. You actually watch as you touch it and you see that your entire arm where you can see touching the amulet just immediately turns into like blue jelly and yeah. you just get sucked in. Right. And then you are just on that lovely little oasis beach island. Uh, it's about like 20 foot radius. It's like a basic, it's like, almost like a, well, it clearly is a perfectly disc shaped island. Mm. There's one yeah. palm tree and there's like some nice benches around and some cushions. Uh, you see the sun, it's perfectly midday, and the this lovely blue ocean just stretches out infinitely. Breeze. The horizon. Oh, man, breeze. Beautiful breeze, yeah. Breeze. Sorry, I, was, Sorry. I interrupted you there. Do I have access to snacks and mojitos? Uh, yeah, 100%. You, 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 yeah! you sit there like, hey, oh, I, I can really do with some snacks and mojitos, and then snacks and mojitos just turn up. Brilliant. That's all style, yeah. I love yeah. that. I love that a mojito is canon in this universe as well. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Nothing yeah. else. You've got mead. You've got wine and mojitos. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just the three. Uh, oh, I, I will. I will say. It, sorry to. Um, no one. Like for the second day, um, Carly will ask Pebble if he can try and fix up her leg again. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, yeah. So also... quickly, we'll roll me. To, roll me yeah. two more medicine checks. One for Tali. One for. Chad. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay, so that's cool. So that's what Christina's doing. Brass, can you do anything in the two days? Uh, actually, one of the days you're building furniture, or trying to build furniture. I was going to say, yeah, his his main thing is just trying to fix okay. tavern, um, which I don't know if that is pure uh, like DIY work, or if there is a degree of um, sort of almost going and fetching and carrying new furniture for Burchard and basically being like the mule with tables on his back. Yeah, oh, let's say... Let's... Can Burchard go out on a little shopping Yeah, adventure? that's what I'm Let's say it starts out with you just trying to do DIY and then Burchard basically like takes your enthusiasm and channels it in a better direction. Um, and you go out for a little bit. Um, something you notice while you're out is that you, Burchard takes you probably back to the sliver of silver to go buy some more furniture. Um, but you do notice him, he stops by, it's more for Ryan's sake than Brass, I'll let you figure out how much Brass understands it. He stops by what appears to be almost like a post office, and he picks up some, it's almost like small books or documents, um, but you don't know what they are, but he clicks those, and then he then goes to the Sliver of Silver, picks up some, uh, some furniture and gets you to help carry it back. Um... Thank you for writing that down, Pebble. So, you know, based yeah. on the medicine checks, so that's one more, that's one success for Chad, but not a success for Tali. Yeah. So, Sad. Chad, you can write down somewhere. I'll leave it to you to remember, but you have one success in your um, healing. Can Pebble join for the second day? I was like, uh, oh, Tali, where did you go? <laughs> and, uh, I mean, Tali, uh, is, is your endeavor with the homeless people private to you? She might have mentioned it to Pebble, but she probably wouldn't have mentioned it to anyone else. If, like, it's, it's kind of not—it's not a secret thing. But she doesn't want to like go bring like a huge group to the homeless. But like, if Pebble would like to come, you know, maybe for the second day, Pebble joins. Okay. 
do come along and help. Yeah. Um, maybe do some medicine checks as well and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you help cook some food, or maybe yeah. you like give them yeah, tips guess... on how to cook some nicer food or something like that. I imagine nice. that for the first day, besides our little yep. adventure, uh, Pebble would have been like uh, at the kitchen helping. Uh, yep. What's her name again? Helga. Helga. And trying to, you know, make some nice meals for the pub's mm -hmm. guests. Which are yep. probably none. <laughs> Would, um... There are some guests, though. It's it's very quiet. Actually, no, that's not true. Um, what you do notice about the public guests is they get just a little bit busier over these like, next two days. Oh, neat. Not quite sure why. They're just a little bit busier. Cool. So some fresh faces seem to turn up. Uh, although you do, maybe you notice that um, Dimitri doesn't come around. And from what you understood, yeah. he was a regular. And um, so if um, Tally is going to aid the homeless at a point where Pebble can have a break from cooking, yes, otherwise mm -hmm. Pebble will be too absorbed on the cooking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You help. You absolutely, you help. Question. Yes. Um, in, in like the evening times of across a couple of days, like does Tally have time to make more dream catchers for basically for the rest of the party? Oh, nice. Let's say yes. Let's just say nice and easily. You you have enough time in the evenings to make a dream catcher for everyone else in the party. Yeah, she she would she would um just kind of like over the, over the course of the two days come and distribute to every person like to tell give them the dream catcher, tell them to keep it with them while they sleep, and then it will um protect them from sort of nightmares and bad Lovely. stuff while they sleep. So she'll give one to everyone and one for Burchard. Very nice. Uh, oh. Burchard is a bit sort of. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that. Uh, it's just, he takes it gladly. But yeah, there is a little. She like, hangs it up for him. It's like, I'll just set it up for you. Just... Yeah. Mm. Uh, where, where do you hang it up? Is there like a. Is this, does he have like a bed post? What, what kind of. What's his bed like? Does he have to hang out on the bed? Are you post like, basically like... Like, trying to hang up in his office and near his bed? Well, well like where that. he sleeps, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So my point is, are you trying to go into his room? Uh, she might say, like, I can just come in and hang it somewhere if. if I mean, where he's most of the day when he's not in the pub is he has like a desk, like an office space, which is kind of a bedroom desk. So if you go in, uh, you'll find him there and like that. He doesn't like, he welcomes you in, it's fine. And you, he allows you to sort of, okay. yeah, hang like up. Just, <laughs> The way you're asking him, like, am I supposed to be in here? Oh, okay? just kind of, it's just like hanging on his bed. It's like, okay. okay. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can role play it out if you want. Oh. No, it's fine. But I, I will always say one thing. Uh, roll me a perception check. As you're in his room. Oh, like that pebble, come on! Because, um, as you're ha and he, he does allow you to hang it up, and he, he doesn't really pose, uh, oppose what was it. That? What was that? Per Perception. 24. 24, wow. amazing. You see, dotted around the room, are various memorabilia from his life as an adventurer. Oh. Um, you see what appears to be paintings of the ocean. Um, you see what appears to be, uh, this this like letter or like a certificate almost of ownership um and it appears to be for a boat mm. a sailing ship mm. um you see uh, another painting similar to one you the big one downstairs of him and the original members of, of small and mighty mm. the, the the other gnomes and then one thing on the wall you notice is and it, it it's familiar to you for a moment um the job posting that you all saw around town that invited you to come be members of Small and Mighty, you see that exact same job posting on the wall. Apart from it's written in a different handwriting and a different date on it. And it looks old and weathered and up on the wall. Can I, can I like, while I'm here, just sort of like, like, just in a friendly way, be like, this is a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And then, like, kind of just go and look at that. Like, is it like, what's the date? Like, what's the, what's the difference? Is it the same yeah, exact so it wording? It's the exact same wording. And it's written in this kind of big curly cursive writing that is much more fitting of the flowery language that was in that. And he looks up and he's like, ah, that was, um, well, that was the job posting I responded to. But it, it's the same. Yeah, like well, it, it, It's no, no, like, like it, it's like word for uh, word the same. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I was never a good, Calwin was much better at writing than I ever was, so I just used the wording he used back when he when they recruited me. Wait, so wait, is this is this the is this oh, sorry, is it, this is a job posting for Small, small and Mighty? mighty. Not yeah, for Small the and Mighty. Quest we just did. Okay. Oh no, That's sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, this is the like, application, 
the okay, application to become members of Small and Mighty. Word for word the same as one Burchard posted around town, but written in much curly handwriting and with a different date. It doesn't show the year, but then yours didn't also show the year. Huh. But um, very much, you know, the Heroes Wanted poster. Well, it's um, it's it's good. It's good. It's good writing. I just was surprised. So. Yeah, and when you look at it, it, is this is quite old. It probably is many, many decades old. How long ago did you apply? I've been I've been a member of the company for eight years. Eighty. Mm-hmm. Dear human. He's dwarf. Oh. How long dwarfs live for? Is that normal? Uh, a couple hundred. What you understand? Oh, okay, okay. But you were you were part of the original group. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, persuasion check. See if you can. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Eke a story out of him. Four. Four. Okay. Oh, but it's but yeah. Yeah, yeah. She will also did what 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 happened. <sighs> Maybe I'll tell you about it someday. Not right now. Okay. Oh, you sorry. can kind of tell in his body language that something something know. has shook him or upset him recently, and he's, he's not willing to go down memory lane again. <laughs> Okay. We think Dimitri was an old adventurer buddy. Oh, God. Also, are you? Are you? Are you? You seem tired. I didn't mean to upset you. Uh, no, you are, no, it's, it's not you. Um, is something troubling you? Can you I know help? when you get drunk and you start thinking about the past. Um, nope. <laughs> oh well, okay. Well, I got drunk and started thinking about the past. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not our fault, but. Christina started talking about some old family stuff. And... Always so eloquent. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm... Drunk texted his ex. I'll, t but I'll tell you about it sometime, just not not today. Maybe even tomorrow, or maybe later at night, I don't know. Just... You take, take, take your, your, your time. But, um, you know, we're, I know our group's a little... Um, we're a little odd, but we're happy to, to keep you company and, you know, like... I don't uh, have anybody family-wise either, so I didn't... I, I know how that feels. I, I appreciate that, Tali, I do. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, my, my uh, door's always open. Points to the dream catch, like, thank you, that's it's very sweet of you. It's okay, I hope you have um, some... You, you get the sense that that's a genuine compliment, that's not like him brushing it off oh, like right, you did. Right. When you first came in, it was a bit more blase about it, or a bit awkward, but that was like a genuine compliment. So uh, just, I hope you have a good good night's sleep and, and aren't troubled by anything. Um, anything else you want to do in this time period, guys, or go on, Chad? Uh, I was just, uh, uh, one is Chad, Chad thing. The other one is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a, just an observation. So, so Bachard used to be an adventurer. Uh, he now has a peg leg. Say it, Will. Say it. <laughs> Did he take an arrow in the knee? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, he was a sailor, so he lost it at sea. Yeah. I'll bet that leg's never been crushed by a falling day. <laughs> um, uh, the other only th thing with Chad for these two days, because obviously I'm imagining going to a dry cleaners and buying some more clothes and take two days, is yeah, it um, you guys, he's just kind of been hanging around looking kind of listless uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the pub. Um, and I'd like to imagine that possibly each of you, when you've gone out and done your things, have kind of seen him and been like, "Oh, Chad, do you want to want to come out?" It just seems like you guys will probably do that. Uh, and he's gonna d decline, but still not really do anything. It's gonna be in that sort of paralyzed kind of yeah. thing where, like, which is you the reason be doing why... stuff, but you're not doing stuff. Yeah, he's just kind of yeah. That's the justif justification for Preble being successful with the medicine check because you're like so paralyzed. Yeah, yeah. He's, like not afraid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just he's just like that wasting wasting away a couple of days, mm -hmm. not doing anything really. I, w I will say um, just as a side note, like so you know, Talia has like a little donations box. She's gonna put it like on the 
bar or like just under the bar and she's gonna like at some point and tell Bochard like this is the donations box if people donate money like I can then go and distribute it to the homeless people um so that's just a thing so if Bochard wants to advertise yeah, he, that he's free he doesn't oppose that being around um but good um at some point during these two days uh two other things happen um probably maybe kind of in the evening when when you guys are sort of bedding down for the night um you'll hear some barking outside apart from pebble who just hears hey hey are you in there hey it's me oh what, what? Uh, I'm but back. Pebble, pebble never uh, but does that Why? does that not wear off what the hell that's great. Yeah, it's more fun this way. <laughs> yeah, it's more fun this way, for sure. You, it doesn't wear off. You can turn it on and off is what we were basically saying. Nice. So Right now it's on, and you hear this shout like, Hey, it's me! I'm back! You're, yeah, Coming from outside the pub. Is it the pub, the pug or Daisy? It sounds very familiar to the pug. Yes, mate! I'm here for you, <laughs> baby! Pug, 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 Let's go! Pug, 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 pug. Um, yeah, yeah, I received the pug. Gracious. So you take one outside to go meet the pug. Just like, hey, and I pet the pug. I'm like, how have you been doing? Super excited, but the pug. As, I... as you're petting and saying this, the dog's like, have you got more food? Sorry? <laughs> have if you I... got more food? Uh, mm, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> I'm, go I'm gonna give you some right now. And I run to the kitchen, I bring whatever. You, you run to the kitchen and it follows like, he's like, fuck yeah, let's go! Just chases you to the kitchen. Right. Uh, <laughs> but you have to, you know, you have to uh, be irresponsible with the food. Uh, stay up, can you, like, stay outside the kitchen? Can I, can you stay outside the kitchen so that he doesn't Roll the animal handling doing. check. Roll me an yeah. animal handling check to see if you can get this dog to stay outside. Um, animal handling, I am proficient. I rolled at an 11 though. Can we adopt the pug? Okay. In the pub, um, have a pug. The pub does, the pug, the pug does sort of stay like, Fine, but, please. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> and I give him something from the kitchen. Uh, whatever, I don't know. Crap. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the kitchen, in the middle of the night, uh, Helga is not there. Oh, this is in the middle of the night, alright. So yeah, it's, like, it's not well, it's late evening. I right, great. Like, you're, you're all in bed. I the hell was well, not there. I Again, well you didn't see Helga leaving. No, but it's good. I'm relieved that she's not there. Because yep. otherwise I'd be very worried. Yeah. I'm like... Uh, it's uh, like sleeping <laughs> in a cupboard or something. <laughs> I think she I think she it does the Terminator 2 thing. That she dissolves into the floor and then back. Um, <laughs> that's she like, is the sack. kitchen. Yes. Yes. Um, she is the kitchen. Um... But yeah, so what? So uh, so what's new? Uh, what 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 was your name again? What was the pug's name again? Did we? You don't know. You never got a name for the pug. We never uh, what, asked it. What's new? I... Good good bo boy girl. It's a male pug. Good boy. <laughs> what's new? Ah. <laughs> I was kind of hanging out in the streets, and all the other big dogs were being mean to me. And then you guys came along, you gave me food, and you were nice to me. And then you left, and I got sad for a while. I was like, hey, shit, I'm going to go find them. So then I ran across town, and now I'm here. Yes. Be mine. Um, can, we just, can we just adopt him, please? Yes, I'm going to. Pebble is going to. Okay, you can, you can hang out. I mean, as long as you don't, you know, as long as you don't make a mess, as long as you don't startle any customers, as long as you don't eat all the food, it's fine. I'm gonna make no promises. Oh. <laughs> I love well, that the pug is, is like has the voice of Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very fitting. Um, shall I ask? Uh, so, how how should I call you? Like, what what's your name? I don't know. I've lived on the streets all my life. What's a name? We have oh. to keep him. What? Do, you never had an owner? Are you serious? Uh, how how are you so healthy? Uh, is is he healthy? To roll me a medicine check. <laughs> oh, medicine checks. I love them. Uh, um, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, no, this this dog oh, uh, is not. I give him more to eat. Yeah, I'm gonna not like disease, but just not well fed. Like this, this is a pug who's been leaving all scraps of the street and stuff like this, and 
No, like I said, you bugs... fed it and you were nice to it, so it's here to get more yeah. food. Bug bugs are meant to be random, chubby, and adorable. I need to. Yes, I'm gonna feed that little boy. Yeah. Um. Yes. Oh. Um. But yeah, I didn't want to do anything in particular. That this this pug is yours, and you can yeah. do what you please with this pug. We. I don't know how to name him. We would love him. Um. I'm I have, I have a name written down in my notes, if unless, but you obviously can pick a name, but I have a name. The name is Boy! <laughs> it's like a B, an O, and, a, and an I, but said in can a we really... Just call it, can we just call it Fenton? Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, Fenton! The name tonight. I've got written down, like, placeholder name is Spud. Spud the Pug. <laughs> nice. Um... I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call him Boy for now, and then next day or whenever we, yeah, we can have a discussion. Cool. Yeah, you have a pug. Um, and you feed it. It eats everything you feed it. Of course. And then, if you allow it, we'll cuddle up to you in bed. Hey. Oh, I need it. He probably snores so much. He does. Oh, <laughs> I mean, Unai wouldn't mind, because I snore more than pucks, but Pebble might mind a little bit. <laughs> but it's fine, because it's overwhelming. Um, his presence is overwhelming, anyway. Um, I'm just yeah. checking if I can cast like some spell to muffle the, <laughs> the <laughs> thing. I'll let you figure that out, but... Um, yeah, go ahead. That like, happens at some, some point in, in the downtime. Um, one other thing that happens in the downtime, uh, at some point when you're all gathered in the common room, uh, this is probably post-pug, so maybe Pebble's showing off the pug to everyone who turned up in the <laughs> night. Um, but Birchard does come into the room and, and tries to gather all your attention. He's like, right, and he sort of puts some paperwork down on the table in front of you. Mm. I've been up to the town and I've been doing some uh, some... A little bit of research um, about how to get you lot magical licenses, and okay. he puts down what appears to be a pamphlet in front of you, which is quite literally how to apply for a magical license. Yeah. If anybody is paying special attention, Tali is uncomfortable. Nice. Now, and 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 and, and Chad just kind of blows eyes. <laughs> Got one. <laughs> now yeah, there is the um. One second. Look on. Meta. Speaking in meta in the metaverse, we've established that Chad's license is not actually It's a performance license. Right. It's a real license, it's a genuine license, but for oh. performative magic. So like illusions oh, right. and like party tricks and stuff like that. Which Chad has shown no aptitude for so far anyway, which is <laughs> very Yeah. Um so he puts down this pamphlet and he opens it up and it's a very boring looking pamphlet like right so there is the official process in which you gotta send a letter off to the offices of the secretary of arcane standards you gotta include a legal name current address then you gotta go up and have an interview etc or i've heard on the streets that you can get counterfeit magical licenses now this obviously sounds dodgy but from what i understand this contact I've heard of will set you up license. Your details will be put into the system, but there'll be no inspections, no interviews. You will have licenses, but it'll be basically tucked in under anyone's noses. So, counterfeit. Well, I just um, when um, in in my experience. When things happen in a town or an area of a town um, that are magical in nature, and, and the um, the Justicars want to know more, they do searches of every property that has a magic license. You know, for every person who has a magic license, they'll search everywhere, or every single one in that area, to find in more information to find if they're hiding. Mm, that's why. I don't know if um. If we want that sort of possible attention on Question the down. tavern, how do how do they know um, that we have a magic? If we do the counterfeit way, it's like best of both. Well, it'll still be in the, in the system, system, right? Oh, They'll right, still have. Yeah. But I do think you could probably give a fake name and address. Oh, that'd be banger. Now, obviously, that might get you in trouble on yourself if that ever comes to a point of someone questioning it but at least like you're saying Tali 
If you have a magical item that tells that says that it's somewhere else in the city or neighboring town or something like that, that won't that prevent what you're you're worried about. People kicking down the doors. Oi, chat, pay attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention because uh, you know I'm. I've already got one of these licenses, and yeah, I don't need to, you know, suddenly reply to me, you know. <laughs> can, I, can I see that for a second, Chad? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, here you go. Uh, there you it go. takes the license, and it's like, again, I've mentioned it before, but like a little scroll like... case. <laughs> little, it's like a, like a leather scroll case with like a purple band around it, which is mm. which designates it as a performance license. He takes it and looks at it. And then he turns the pamphlet around and starts reading something. When you came over to Bratton shit, did you show this at Border Control? Uh... You know, it was all such a... You know, I, when I crossed the border, I... Yeah, I was... How do we say? Uh, completely off my face. So, I don't really remember all that much about the process, uh, to be cool, honest. Cool, cool, cool. So... Alright. Chad's an illegal mage in the country as well. That's helpful. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What? Well, the magical licenses are, as I say, they are, as you say, it help Templar kick down his door so he goes wrong. Just a card by Chad on Templars. Yes, I've also been playing Twitch Dragon Age. <laughs> Just a card. Um, <laughs> when you go from nation to nation, like Chad's done here, you're supposed to tell them that you're a magic user going into the other nation. And where you're staying, so that if they need to kick down doors and find you, they know where to look. Right now, Chaz license says he's still in Riverdan. Oh, so, so if you like haven't told Border Control, All right. yeah. if you haven't told Border Control that he's crossed over, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it doesn't. You know, uh, you know while I. While I, I'm, you know, while I can definitely 100% do magic, uh, the I, I have, yeah, I seem to be getting to, getting by absolutely fine without doing so. So you know, uh, yeah, don't ask, don't tell, or, or, or whatever. What, what magic can you do? Because, like you say, maybe it's not such a problem if he doesn't do magic. Like not in the public. So what can't like can What is? What do you do? What do I do? Mm. What magic can you do? Can you show us some? Well, I mean, uh, you know, all the kinds of magic that people tend to tend to do that that they're good at. You know, uh, I don't need to prove myself uh, to 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 anyone uh, really about any of this. They're just holding your license, she goes, Chad, and just puts it down like, what kind of license do you have? Uh, it's a license that permits me uh, to uh, to perform magical acts. This is it is perfectly, perfectly legitimate <laughs> and above board, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and and definitely wasn't a a birthday gift from my mummy. That just rolls it back up and just hands it back to you like hey, your birthday present back. Thank you, budget. <laughs> just just don't if anything, if, if the Justice Cards ever show up, or anyone ever asks about Magic Licenses, just don't mention you have one. That's that's a problem unto itself. Let's not, let's not get into that. Okay. Okay, so nope. if it's such a problem, why do you want us to get a license anyway? We could... if, uh, well, well, the problem in. is... Oh, okay, it's fine. She, I guess she won't. Don't she she, she would just, like, butt in, like, if, if the Justice Cards find out that you we can do magic, or you can do magic, uh, and I don't have a license, they will arrest you. That. But we can magic ourselves away! No, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, that is absolute news to Brask. He's just, he's thinking back to all the... He's been casting spells pretty often. Yep. And he has never been more ashamed of himself. 
Oh. Broke the oh. law. He would never do such a thing. Even if he doesn't agree with a rule, he follows it to the frickin' letter. So, and like, from what he understands, you guys are considering breaking the law to get a license, and he will absolutely not stand for it. Bless. Who's gonna sit down? <laughs> he, we will... <laughs> He's gonna pull his glass and like, boys. <laughs> he, he will be going and doing it the official way, and if any of you try not to, he will drag you Brask. along with him or arrest Brask. you. Brask. Is he leaving now? Or is this like a. He <laughs> is he leaving now? Every second he waits is another second where he is a criminal. Okay. That how exactly hurts him. One second, one second. Is he, yeah, is he getting up and walking away? He is gonna take the the brochure from yep. and, and hopefully understand where to go. And yeah. yeah, he's he's he doesn't hesitate. Yeah, so you watch his brass oh, no. gets on walks away and bird child's like, uh just even if he's well, he's looking at you guys like even if he's Wants to do this legitimately. This is not. A, no, you have to send a letter. Tell Brus, me, tell Brus. me if you're gonna try and get like in, the door, like in one of the doorways. So either in the doorway to the room. So either in the the doorway to the room or the doorway yeah. out front. He's gonna get in the doorway. Yeah, you can do that. It's fine. Uh, Brusk, wait, because that's you don't you don't first you don't go you don't go there. You send a letter. Or, or you can send a charge chats like, or you can send a wire if you want to be quicker about it. But you don't Bichard, go with it yet. Bichard, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you send a letter, brusk, brusk, brusk. You can't use this address. That's where I live. Yeah, I know, I know, but if they come here, we will all get in trouble even if you have a magic license and even if it's legal and everything you will be in trouble I what have I done it's not what you've done um it's Did just you do? no no I well I didn't do anything this it's is just... your fault <laughs> you see the the, the, the people the who possible? do no, no. Uh, so the people who deal with the the magic people who don't have, you know, a license to be there, or um, or people who have run away, they they arrest them, um, and they're looking for me. So You're a and, criminal. No, I'm not a criminal. I didn't do anything. Yeah, can can Chad can everyone hear this? Yeah, this is a conversation having. I was about to say, uh, he doesn't want to have this conversation here, but we're having no, it. Here. Not. Uh, Chad definitely roll me roll me an insight check. I'm gonna say with advantage. I think you're a good uh, good boy who was probably raised good to believe boy. in the Abbey of Civility. Seventeen. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Um, it does dawn on you in this this conversation happening and like. In the Chad way, you weren't fully paying attention to a lot of stuff going on outside of your own experience, but it has dawned on you this moment right now with what Tali's saying, that Tali is a godling. And again, I'll explain this for your your knowledge. From everything you've been taught from the Abbey Civility, godlings are, they are children born with the, the blood of the gods within them. They are incredibly holy. They are essentially angels, that, mortal angels, essentially. And from your talk, you're not allowed to talk to them unless spoken to. You're barely allowed to look at them. Uh, usually, they are locked away in abbeys, and you basically get to see them on special occasions or weekends and stuff like that. And then they're basically locked away back in abbeys. Um, and yes, standing right before you, it has just dawned on you that Tali is a godling. Um, probably. Had go ahead. To, go I mean, ahead. obviously, I'll let you decide on how religious Chad actually is, but I would say maybe your instinct is to. Get brass to show more respect is possibly where your instinct would go, but take it away. It's yours. So this, this is this is doesn't necessarily need to interrupt the conversation that that Tali's having, but while you're having that conversation, at the moment that Chad twigs this, Chad's gonna suddenly just just like it goes, tw twigs, and he just kind of like stands up, 
really abruptly to the point where like the chair falls over and he sort of bumps into it, bumps yeah, the, bumps, yeah, yeah. bumps the the thing, and sort of stands up and just goes, and sort of looks looks at Tali, looks away from Tali, and looks and just, and, just, and, just, <laughs> and like looks like really kind of kind of panicked and stuff. So he's he's doing that in in. Yeah. In the okay. background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tali will say to Brass, you know, like I didn't, I didn't do anything, but I'm, I'm, kind of, in a way, someone's the property of the religious institution, the religious place here. Like a kind of, kind of like a prisoner, kind of, in simple terms. Escape prison. But not like a, not like prison, not like for criminals. Just because I exist. Um, they. At this point, the chat chat's gonna be. Brask. Um. Uh. Do uh. Yeah. Uh, Brask. Do do what she. Do do what she says. Uh. Do what they say. Um. Yeah, stand down, uh, and he's sort of like doesn't know where to look at this point, and doesn't know whether to like approach or not approach. Uh, uh, yeah. Clarify, Brask knows nothing about what a godling is or anything. No, like that. this is like uh, you don't. It's your people don't often follow the Abbey of Civility. Him. You have you have your own beliefs, and uh, a godling is. Uh, your people. Uh, roll me a religion check. Let's see what you do now, actually. I mean, um, Tali, Tali may go on to explain a little bit for Brass. Because also, for the sake of I'll let Christina roll and we create a religion check as well. Yeah. But you're... I got a natural one. Hell yeah, <laughs> you know, fuck all. Yes. Um, but Christina, roll me a religion check as well. That showed up on D&D Beyond. Zero. Okay. Um, zero? What? <laughs> oh, yes, because I'm a, I'm a minus oh, one in religion. Oh, nice. oh boy. Oh, yeah, so zero. Um, I'm a minus one in religion. Christina, for your sakes, your nation doesn't follow the ambient civility you broke away from the baronies so you basically separate yourself from the main religion as well um but although you have heard of them because historically your your people did follow it godlings are these again you you know the same sort of things they're they're they are mortal angels etc etc you you just don't hold the same reverence for them they're they're powerful beings. Your people is a culture of like magic everyday society, so you kind of see them more as like they're just magical beings. And powerful as they are, they're not worth revering. That's kind of your take yeah. on it. Just like they're just Russell kind of doing away. their own thing. <laughs> still a bit magic. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um Yeah. Oh, so and this doesn't nothing that's happened so far has convinced Brask. Anyway, like he, he, okay, he, he's just gonna sort of calmly explain directly to Tali, who's like between him and the door. I came here to be a hero. Heroes uphold the law. You broke it, and he's just gonna pick her up and start walking out the door, carrying her. People who make the laws are people, and they make mistakes. And what if it? What if the law is wrong? Chad is going to. Carried. Chad is going to sprint across the room and and oh, no. and try to like like just like grab. Just like no 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 no. no. Uh, Brask, um, uh, I'll yeah, have, no, no. I'll have Chad and 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 Brass roll me opposing athletics checks, please. <laughs> oh, good good luck on this, Brass. Good luck on this. Oh, uh, six. Yeah. <laughs> yep, thirteen. Yeah, okay. So, the, the Hands are is, four, okay. The problem is for you, Chad, like, this should be an easy task, but you're kind of feeling awkward about grabbing Tali, so it's kind of, like, awkwardly <laughs> just like, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. To, like, look at her. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, despite that, you do wrestle Tali away from Brask's. Yeah. Brask. Apologies, I do keep referring to Tali as a she, but Tali is a they. She's a she's they, so either is fine. Oh, so, okay, I, 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 it's nice that you interchange it, because that's kind of representative, right? It's good. Mm -hmm. Cool, weird. right. Anyway. If, if Brass is still trying to leave, Tali is going to cast Hold Person on him. Fuck yes! Brass, make me a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, how, do, how to solve the problem about do we get magical licenses or not? I know, cast magic. Uh, no. You got 14. 
Oh fuck! It's one. Oh man, one over. You feel this restrictive magic over you, and you're like, "No, I must be a hero." Oh, this is why we're doing so. this. In, in like straining to break out of the magic, when he finally like gets free of it, can he just basically punch the door open, like oh. shatter it if he can? He probably uh, could he, quite easily. You don't shatter it, but you, so I'm going to say it's like a saloon door. It just swings open. <laughs> no, the opening of no. Shrek. All we're not starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not, we're not done though, because she's going to cast sleep. So that first one didn't work. Okay, she cast sleep. Oh, Try to defuse the situation. Go on. Go on. Go on. Christina, what, what's Christina doing? I was going to help out cast Dancing Lights in Brass's eyes to oh. maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay. Stop. He's Classic. like, do it. So as, as you kick open the door, uh, what colour dancing lights are they, Christina? Um, and they're can... bright Sorry, pink. Just to... Yep. Just to check, I feel like at some point soon, we should oh, be rolling yeah. some initiative. Yeah, Maybe. Point. We'll come, we'll come to point. that. Okay. I feel like we might be, might be more of a cliffhanger moment, then roll an initiative next time, but okay. we'll see. Um, if, sleep, if sleep doesn't work and dancing lights don't work, then maybe. Perhaps. Uh, first of all, Barnes, there was a pink dancing light that just suddenly appear in front of your eyes. Um, Doesn't make a difference. He's marching directly oh, forward. Yeah. You can do that without his eyes. <laughs> so the next sleep is going off, but I feel like we'll also say something. Had also did win the, the athletics. Yes, you got Tali off of. Barnes is now right, going off cool. his own. Okay, okay. So I, oh, so I'm whole, I've, I've got Tali. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, no. So Barnes is going. You have to just. Get him to stop. We have to explain. He doesn't understand. So you you gotta cast sleep. Uh, roll the the dice. Yeah. Oh wait. So hang on. So how? I need to quickly check which which level I would, I'm cast at. Just yeah. just as a slight addendum, like bra when you're saying like Brass doesn't understand, he can hear you, and no. that just pisses him off. Frankly, you, you have. I He's not. He doesn't consider himself stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's not what you said, but it's fair. I can understand that. That's a fair um, interpretation of. Anyway. He understands and you don't. He understands to the letter. We're going to pass it at a second level because the yeah, situation okay. is ah, dying. So least. roll roll, roll all the numbers? Uh, yes. So I need. It's a lot this of dice. Many. I mean, I need a lot of dice. Uh, uh, D. I didn't want it to go down this way, guys. Oh, boy. Um, I need to check them about sleep, though, one sec. Uh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, say it's really also, annoying though. Can I can I move how far away from away from the group? Can I strategically well, uh, move? I was about to say you can cast it as such where you're not getting anyone else apart from Yeah. Because you've learned from last time when you put Chad to sleep. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that again. That's also brass is basically burst through the door and out into the street at this point, so you can basically cast it on the outside. Yeah. Out how many porch. hit points does Brass have? Twenty six. <gasps> it fucking works! Roll well, 31! Yeah. So Brass, as you kick open the door, there's these purple flashing lights, you like, swipe them away, mm -hmm. and as you step out, you suddenly just go... Okay, all right, right. We need to, land like... Land, tail up okay. in the air, just collapse, you are asleep. Uh, yes, can... Are... Uh, and can you check the thing I just <laughs> asked of you? Uh -oh. Yes, I can. Let's have a little look at what's going on over here. Yeah, poor time for that, because sleep only lasts for a minute, so Tarly's plan is to try and get him... Yes, like, so you watch down. as... Yeah, well, oh, no. as you approach him, you watch his brass, he does fall asleep, and as he does, all the bees start to form around him and perform this, like, protective barrier around him, like... Yes. So is he asleep? He's asleep. So I'm asleep, but the last command I gave to my bees, as I was losing consciousness, was just... Fend. This is the exact face Tali's making, she's just like... <laughs> <laughs> yep. You watch the swarm of bees. Yeah, Pebble, can we... Can you try and... Um, we just need to bring Brask inside, and we just need to... We just need to... That's we, true, am I outside, or am I like... Yeah, you're outside. In, you're like, you're, you're, okay. You're getting out into the street. Uh, sure. For the fun of it, just... If Pebble, if you have... Uh, Speak animals up to you. Just hear all the bees like, "Defend the queen! Defend the queen! Defend the queen!" <laughs> Can I? Um... Quite a few of them are still just saying, "Bee, bee, bee!" But everyone's like, "Defend the queen!" <laughs> Amazing. Um, what? Can I try to per <laughs> persuade so the bees? What the fuck? How wait, we don't want to hurt Brask. We just need to come inside yeah, wait, and get just... him sat down so we can just talk. 
the uh, I say to the bees, the queen uh, would be better defended inside the queen's fortress. Please let us move the queen to the queen's make, fortress. Make a deception check, please. <laughs> yes. Save the bees! <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen, okay. Bees aren't the smartest thing, and they their their job was defend brass, and you tell them that brass be better defended inside. So like Yes! Inside! Defend us! <coughs> defend the Queen! And you yes. watch as a lot of them start to form around Brass and start pretend like acting like they're gonna lift oh, Brass that's up. Kind of cute. Um it doesn't do anything though, but yeah, you, but... you are able to bring Bath Brass yeah, back yeah, into just get him in, get him in. Alright, we need to get him like um secured so he doesn't <laughs> leave again. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, um, or... Although I can't talk. Oh. What do you mean you can't talk? Uh, Bojar does pipe up like uh, an idea. If, if Brass wants to do it the official way, why don't you give him some pen and paper and tell him to write a letter? I think I get the feeling that might keep him busy for a little while. But does the letter not have to have the address and the name? Yeah, but I don't think so... Brass can read and write. Yeah, that's true, actually. I was going to suggest maybe we can fake the, um, the certificates for everyone. Uh, we, we, like, oh, no, look, we, we did it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> mind. I, I don't. I, Tali doesn't mind if people have the license. Tali just doesn't want the address of here on it. Fair. Because if really they come here, point. then they will try to take me back. It's a very good point. The brass can't read. This That's is a... true. Tali had not yeah. had not remembered that in her in her. P. P. Sherman wow. forty two Waldy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm, um, that feels. That feels. Mm. Christina doesn't like rules, so she doesn't want any kind of license. <laughs> Not even the counterfeit yeah. one. Ch Chad, Chad is. One. Chad is going to just just take this moment to to just lean lean over to to um, Bichard. Uh, and, and just and just be like, uh, yeah, and it's very, very quietly as he can. So, oh, yeah, um, uh, just between you and me, because uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a good time to, to say. Just, I admit it, I can't do magic. As, as you drop that bond shield of a chart, uh, Tali, what is your passive perception? Uh, uh fifteen. 15, okay. Uh, you hear a creak of the floor as you notice Brass has woken up after a minute has passed and is trying to sneak out the door. Brass! <laughs> <laughs> that's paper. where we're going to end it today. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like messaging Adam on the slide being like, how long has this that conversation gone on for? <laughs> Did I wake up and just nobody noticed? This is fair. So good. Uh, so good. Uh, I love some inner party conflict, guys. You can't go wrong with boy. it. You can't go wrong with it. To be clear, I, as Ryan, entirely on your guy's side. <laughs> no, I know that. I know that. It's okay. Uh, I don't this control is him. This is good. Uh, and, and, and likewise, like I, I, I get it. Magic licenses would be nice, but also we can't have this bucket of dress on them. Yeah. I mean, it's not just that, it's the fact that you've admitted you're a criminal to him. Yeah, it's not, I was, not even I just was, the licenses are the only... I was kind of expecting him to just take, like, pick her up and take her to wherever the nearest... Really um, she's trying to explain, but it's not going well because Brask won't just stop for a second. Yeah. He's a goody this... two-shoes, that's what he is. Yep. Yeah. This party has a very, very mixed relationship with the law and goodness. Yes. <laughs> I, do, I, I really like the fact that Brass, the outsider, is the one is like, I want to uphold the law. It's very interesting. Yeah. 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 It's, it's also good. like, we've all, like, definitely broken laws many times up, at, oh, up until this point. But Brass just trusted you all. Yeah. He, he doesn't know the laws, so as soon as you tell him one of the things he's done is against the law, that's when he's going to care. Oh, if he'd never known magic was illegal, he wouldn't have cared. Yeah, I know, I know, but, but Tali just wanted to explain how the world works to Brass. Could you, you know, mm. innocently explaining. Please. You you overestimate his tiny brain. 
boy. Excellent. Um, hmm. So we'll pick up with the rest of this conflict Indeed. next time. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to work out if I want to give you guys a little teaser about something. You want a little teaser? A little teaser about what your next job's postings on the board might be? If we ever get to them. Go on. Yeah. If you ever get to them. Well, so we have right. to do the inspiration. Or yeah, we'll come back to that. Pebble, it, it, oh, Pebble never it. used it. Never well, used I, it. I used it last time, didn't I? Anyway. It's fine. We'll, let, we'll pass it on. I think it's a good session for it. But um, yeah, if you want to, and you can show us on the screen if you want. But if you're quick, don't read any of them. But if you're quickly looking at the job board, you'll get to see. A, what you might be doing next session if One you not second, behave. Do I do I stream this or no? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's show it for like cool. a few seconds. Have uh, a quick look. There we go. Ooh, interesting. And savory individuals. And savory. Mm. That's it. It's enough. All right. Teaser are over. <laughs> Taking it away from you. Interesting. Um, but yeah, you'll get that if you behave. <laughs> Great. I think Will yeah. read more than I did because his mind looks blown. I just saw. I don't. I didn't. I was gilded I eel. I was too occupied trying to frame <laughs> it. I'm very curious about what was going on in Will's head. <laughs> oh, you read the words gilded eel. Okay, I didn't see the. Sorry, I didn't see the words gilded eel. So to me, that looked like someone has just bought the five fellows and is complaining about us living there. <laughs> oh, dear. <That's> amazing. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> It's because we're like, all the you know? furniture. We're being evicted. We're gonna get hired to kick ourselves out of our they're, they're, they're gonna repossess the. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. But anyway, right. Um, but yes, that's where we're tonight. So yeah, if you if you all behave, next time you'll be able to, to read those you know jobs. That's not gonna happen, right? We have to yeah, deal with boss trying to get Tali arrested. I yep. know. I mean, there are there are methods you could take. You could be like, here. I don't know. You could try and persuade him to just sort of supervise you whilst we do this other job because yeah. that's more urgent. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it would have to be more, more honourable, and then da, 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 da. anyway. Um, this thing yeah. is more illegal than me. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but right, inspiration tokens. Yes. So obviously you didn't get a chance to use this session, you know, but that is fine. It was very downtime heavy. But who would you like to give it to next week, next time? I Why? would like to. I don't know because we've all had it, right? I, yeah, it's I fresh. Start. Just... All fresh. Okay, so just because of the sheer hilarity of it all, I'm just gonna give it to Brask. <laughs> oh, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yay! Thank well you. I'm mean... oh, a dangerous player because that means next session you get to use it. Exactly. It's gonna yes. say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which no! one of you am I gonna use it on? Oh boy. We're never, we're never gonna get back to that job board. Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. So why, why, why did you guys go over business? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we kept fighting each other. Oh, Some no. years later, Bachard in a homeless shelter, and someone asking you. So, they were so promising, but they just kept yeah. fighting. I hired a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I've seen enough hit superhero movies to know that the heroes fight, and then they're bonded by it. Yeah, yeah. unite against the common exactly. foe. That is, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah like or they all go to jail, <laughs> and then they bond, and then anyway. yeah, um, so right, right. I'm gonna bring this to an end. Yes, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, so thank you very much, everyone, for watching today. I hope you enjoyed today's game. I did. It was mental. It was <laughs> Uh, but if you did enjoy us, you can catch us again here in two weeks' time to find out what happens with the party versus Brask. Uh, if you follow us on Twitch and notifications, all that jazz, you'll get let know. You'll be told when we're back. Um, you can rewatch our last episode of of this on YouTube. It's up there. It was up there last week. Uh, this episode will be up on YouTube next weekend. Uh, we also recently released a little highlight video of our favorite moments from the first chapter. Um, so great. have a little watch of that. It's it's very good. The highlights of the greatest. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Smitey Games if you want to see more of our talking about shenanigans. We'll tweet out clips and stuff there as well. But cool. That has been it, guys. We've been Small and Mighty. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.